You made my life so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And as you are, you have made me here on earth. There's nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forevermore you made my life so beautiful so beautiful life and I see you are, you have made me here on earth there's nothing greater than thee that's why I love you why I love you forevermore I want more of you, oh my Lord God. I want more of you, Jesus. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you, oh. oh. I want more of you. I don't know about you I want more of you Jesus the more I know you the more I want to know you Jesus more of you God made my life so beautiful I am beautiful today and I see his he has made me here on earth there's nothing greater than thee that's why I love him why I love him forevermore yes I want more of him I don't know about you I want more of my Jesus cause the more I know him is the more I want to know him Jesus more of him I don't know about you but I want more of God oh I want more of my Jesus cause the more I know him is the more I want to know him Jesus more of him mm. more of you more of you more of you Jesus more of you more of you more of you more of you hey lord i want you more can't get enough can't get enough i want more more of you more of you more of you Jesus more of you 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 Jesus more of you I want more of Jesus every single day every moment every time every hour every second every minute I just want more of God because the more I know him is the more I want to know him the more I know him the more I just realize that there's another dimension of him that I still need to know and I know him today and I know him of this level and he says just like he's going to do things in our lives that will move from glory to glory that's exactly how he also reveals himself in different dimensions of his glory I tell you people I am totally and completely excited because I am truly a girl helped of God
I'm not saying this like the natural cliche that everybody says because everybody can come come out and talk and say things like I'm a God I'm a girl helped of God because it's the thing that is trending I'm not saying it because it's trending I'm not saying it because I lack things to do I am saying it because truly I'm a girl helped of God and God sees my heart he sees the desires of my heart and he knows that they are true they are honest and so he just keeps blessing me left, right, from back and center. He just keeps doing marvelous and crazy, crazily beautiful things in my life. Like I told you guys, it's a fairy tale season. This month is a fairy tale month. The Lord said that to me. It sounded like it was a joke. Like what kind of joke is that fairy tale month like what's the meaning of fairy tale and i try to sit down to think about what fairy tales are <clears throat> and it, it it was simple we always like to overthink things it was simple what are fairy tales is it not these things that look like they're not real they look like you know how they would make um their their girl to be the poor girl whose um, mom died and then the, the stepmom and the stepsisters were treating her bad. I've forgotten the girl's name, you know. And then they make her to get a fairy tale experience, like to get a pumpkin into a carriage and to get a golden glass shoe and to get those kinds of things. <clears throat> those are fairy tale things, you know, like those kinds of things that look like impossible, but you get them in reality. That's how my life has been. I'm actually getting this kinds of stuff, like getting a pumpkin for a carriage, like getting a golden glass shoe, like it's not like in that same light, but you know there's some things in your life that you consider a golden glass shoe, right? You know there's some kinds of gifts and amounts, there's some kinds of businesses you do and the gains you get. It's like you have a pumpkin for a carriage which is very beautiful and it's golden and it's just glitz and glamour those are the kinds of things God has been doing to me like he has just been helping me in ways I can't explain see I need to put that out there so you I you all should know the cloud nine I'm on right now you guys should know the cloud excitement I'm on right now I don't even it's like I don't even know how to express it so well. It's so stuck in my chest that I don't even know how to explain it. But guys, I am just so, so happy. Like, God is doing amazing things in my life. Like, crazy amazing things in my life. And I'm like, Lord, I'm grateful. Father, I want to say thank you. I really want to appreciate you for all that you're doing for me, all that you get to do. Like, it's so beautiful to watch. It's so beautiful to experience. And God is really faithful. And sometimes I say, I'm not like that best, best. I'm not like the prayer warrior kind of person. <clears throat> I study the word of God and thanks be to God for a chapter a day. I really do study the word of God as well because of a chapter a day. And the other times that I do my morning devotions and then other times when I'm editing the video. So it's like I'm just continuously studying the word of God technically in some ways. So it's like God just still looks at me and say, I know this girl has a heart to serve me, a heart to want to do the things that I want her to do. So I'm just going to bless her. Like, I'm just going to recklessly bless her. <laughs> and he has been blessing me in reckless ways recently. It's, it's mind-boggling. Sometimes I even make mistakes. Like today, I made a crazy mistake. And in that mistake, see, <clears throat> sometimes, eh, when I read my morning devotions, I'm asking God that, is this something that is about to happen or is something that has already happened to me? But funny enough today, it's just right now as I'm talking to you all that I remember what my morning devotions was about. It says, don't mind whatever you're going through because every single thing is working for your good. No matter how stupid or terrible or bad or ugly or whatever it is, God is going to turn you around for your good. Today, I actually got the wrong, um, I put in the wrong something, wrong something. 
and it did not only work for my good it worked beyond beyond like on normal basis i was supposed to just double what i was supposed to get it actually tripled and i'd used the wrong currency like if that is not god then i don't know who, what else it can be if that was not god i don't know what else it could be it would have been worse it would have been that I lost that same amount that I got. But God says, no, my baby girl ain't going to get that. She's going to get a fairy tale experience. And while that happened, I was surprised because that first account actually got its target earlier, like way early. And I was like, but this one actually got in a little bit late. So how is it possible that it's instead hitting the target before time and tripling it? Instead of just double, that is the normal thing. It's tripled. What's going on? You know, like, I was really surprised. I was surprised. I was, like, totally and completely taken aback. And I was looking at it, and I was continuously just in awe. And then it's some other person who even noticed that the currency wasn't right. Oh, my God. Like, God is just so awesome. He's awesome like that. So today, our Bible party is taken from the book of... 1 Samuel chapter 30 and it has 31 verses and this is the last but one chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. I'm so excited. So by Sunday we'll be starting with a very new book, the book of 2 Samuel. Okay and I'm really really excited because it has been God all the way. God has brought us this far. He has made it possible for us to be able to get through with the New Testament and we're now on with the Old Testament, it has truly and honestly be, been God all the way. I can't. I can't take it for granted. I can't take it lightly. It has been God all the way. And I'm really, really grateful. I don't know how to thank Him. I don't know how to just rejoice. I don't know how to really celebrate. But it has been God all the way. And so we have to go to get to do um, prayer. We hand over the session to God. And after handing over the session to God, we get to um, <clears throat> we get to do the birthday party, which is where we celebrate people who are in our birthday book. We tell the world who they are to us, and then we go ahead and do the Bible party, which I just told you right away. It is from the book of First Samuel, and it's chapter thirty today, and he has thirty-one verses. So let's pray and then get right on with what we have for today. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for protection, provision, and for all the good and amazing things that happen to us. We thank you even for the difficult things that happen to us, for the not so nice things that happen to us. We still say thank you because we know it's all working for our good. Increase while we decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day. Father, we just want to thank you. We just want to bless you because you're a faithful God. You never fail, you never sleep nor slumber. You're always there for us, always providing for us, always guiding us, always helping us, always seeing us through in everything that we do. Father, come now and take total control. We just want to give you all the praise because you deserve it. We just want to give you all the honor because you truly deserve it. Thank you. Come now and be the one to guide and lead us and drive us through this session of a chapter a day today. And we know we're going to arrive at our destinations safely and soundly because you're the one who is leading us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> amen, people. Amen, amen, and uh, amen. So let's get this Bible party going. Okay? Let's get the Bible party going. Let's get the Bible party going. Get the Bible party going. Okay. So, the, today is the 17th of uh, June. And we have amazing people who are born today. So, let's get this birthday thingy going. Okay. So... The first person on our birthday book is O'Neill Omar. O'Neill Omar is the son of one of my very good friends. His name is Mr. Charles Omar. And we got to meet 
when I was in the university, that's how I got to know him. That's how we got to know each other. I'm really excited and really happy that we got to connect and we knew each other. I'm very, very grateful to God. And um, God has been really faithful. God has been really amazing. And of course, the little boy is growing in leaps and bounds. Happy birthday to you, little one. Okay, the next person on our birthday book is Man Patience Cho. Man Patience Cho, we actually went to the same um, high school together. She was a very calm person, very composed, but very lovable. You know, um, even when we left school, we kind of connected a little bit again from time to time. And then later on, we disconnected. But social media got us to connect back again. Um, we don't talk as much frequently, but she's a really nice person. She's someone who always looks out for her friends to make sure that we all are fine. We all are doing great. I <clears throat> appreciate her so much for that. I really want to say thank you to you, my patients, for being an amazing friend and all. I'm so, so grateful. I'm forever grateful to you for being that kind of a blessed friend. Okay, the next person is Mr. Odoka Ipo. Mr. Odoka Ipo, we actually got to know each other when we got to, um, <clears throat> we sang together. There was a crusade that was happening in Cameroon then. And at this crusade, they were a part. They came um, all the way from Nigeria and they came for this crusade. And it was really an exceptional time. It was a great time together with the guys i was so 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 elated i was so happy to have met them he can play musical instruments like a couple of them and he can sing oh my god mr Odoka, like it has been forever i hope that we'll get to meet again some other day some other time somehow i pray i pray that we get to meet again there were a group of nice amazing people children of God who love God and they were just in the music ministry it was just so good and considering the fact that I love music as well I love singing dancing and all that <clears throat> it was just a great time we had together we just had a whole lot of fun while serving God serving God has never been so sweet when you really serve him with all your heart it can be ever sweeter when you when you put in your all and you really truly decide to serve God with your whole heart, you enjoy it. The reason why some of us don't enjoy serving God is because we're one leg in, one leg out. It's strenuous. us. It's stressful. It's exhausting when you want to serve God like that. But when you make up your mind and open up your heart to serve God fully, he does wonders. He does wonders. God does marvelous things he does like crazy marvelous things for you you need to believe that and you need to get on it you need to really believe god that he's a god who can turn your life around like crazily around <clears throat> okay so let's go people the next person the last but not the least is sir eric banaf sir eric banaf i got to know him through friends when the same school together but for some weird reason I really didn't know him that much but when we got online now and connected I realized that it was somebody that I knew but I was not very close to him my best friend was but I wasn't at that time so I got closer to him but when we finally reconnected online and I was like, oh, I can't believe that I didn't know this guy. He's a fun to be with person. He's one of those people that he's always looking out for small businesses, especially African businesses, to showcase them, to help them get popularity, to help them gain a um, market, to help them gain, like, you no, know, just become um, known brands and known names especially on social media because whether we like it or not social media has a market and a very big market and if we don't take advantage of it if we don't grab it while it's there we're going to be losing out and complaining and grumbling while other people are making good use of it welcome 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 mr nyedikachi prince who has been a long long time hope you're doing great this forex trading we're doing i don't know if you've been trusted you should 
it's really a good thing. It's helping us. It's helping a lot of people. I've connected a lot of people, showed them how to do it, and they're doing it, and it's really working great for them. So I don't know. I don't know about you. I don't know if you would want to try it out or something. It's really good. Seriously, it's really good. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be telling people about it. I'm experiencing it, and it has worked for me so far. It's still working. I've just been there two months, and people think I've been there like for forever. People think like I knew this thing. I've studied it. No, I just started, and I was determined, and God has been helping me through. I'm learning why we go, and it's working for me. And I know that it can work for you too because if God is helping me through it, he can help you through it too as well. And the good thing about it is that it's an honest way to make money. Honest way to make money and make good money in fast. I call it fast because some of the amount of money that we make in a day, some people have to work a whole hour and they'll have to do some serious hard work to get that amount of money but we get that in just trading in like five minutes. Now they've been giving us a like 10 minutes, 14 minutes, 10 to about 14 minutes time frame. But when we just started for over two months, we're using just five minutes <clears throat> and we're getting some really good chunk of money. And I'm grateful that God gave me that opportunity. So I saw the opportunity and I'm telling others too, you just might get in and you don't know what might happen. Okay, so Mr. Eric Benaf is that person who shares out and, and tries to help small businesses to grow and to get a name, to get a position in the huge online market. That's what I know him for. I know that he's the kind of people who loves to support and help his own and he has been doing that for a long, long time. I remember somehow how he was showcasing me on his platform, me as a person. Not me as business, but me as a person. And um, I got to connect to a lot of amazing people on there. And it actually yielded some good fruits, I would say so. And so I'm really, really grateful to you, Sir Eric Banaf, for the great work you're doing. Keep doing the good work you're doing. And I pray that God is going to bless you tremendously, ways beyond your reasonable understanding. So let's take that again. Happy birthday to baby boy. When I say baby boy, it looks like he's going to be a small boy. It's like he's grown up right now. Like right now, he should be a grown up child, a grown up boy, handsome young man who's doing great things. Happy birthday, Mr. O'Neill Omar. Happy birthday, Ma'am Patience Cho. Happy birthday, Mr. Udoka Ipo. Happy birthday, Sir Eric Banaf. Happy birthday to you all and God bless you. So let's pray for the birthday people. We're not just praying only for the people that we've called their names right now. We're praying for every single person who was born on this particular 18th day or oh, 17th day of June. We're praying for each and every one of you. So let's get the prayers going. Oh my God. That sound is from my... Let's fix this before I throw my computer out. Sorry, people. Let me take that sound off. It keeps getting on us. Okay, so let's pray. Lord, we bless your holy name. We thank you for all these amazing people that were born today. We thank you, O oh God, for giving them a new year. We thank you, O oh God, for all the amazing things that you have done in their lives. You're doing and you're still to do. Lord, we just bless your holy name. We can't thank you enough for all the amazing and good things you've done in their lives. You're doing and you're still to do. Lord, we pray, O oh God, even as you add a year to their lives today, O oh God, let it be a blessing. Let it be a transformation. Let it be a leading. Let it be a guiding, O oh God. Father, that you're going to lead them in the right path, on the right track. And when they get to that place where they feel overwhelmed, even as they're fulfilling purpose, they feel like they want to give up or they want to back out. They'll hear a loud, clean, clear voice that would say, this is the way, walk thou in it, O oh God. They won't stray the path, they won't derail, they'll stay on course and stand right. <clears throat> Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them to be trailblazers, wall changers, and pay setters in their domains and in their spheres. In Jesus' name we pray. Give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to empower them, O oh God, in a very special way to be able to do your will for the rest of their days. 
Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to open the windows of heaven upon their lives and rebuke every devourer. Pour the choices of your blessings upon their lives in ways that only you can. Father, I pray, O oh God, that they're not going to miss it. They're not going to derail. That when these blessings will come upon them, it's going to be overflowing so much so that anyone who literally connects with them will literally rub off of the blessings and they'll be blessed just as much as these people are blessed just for connecting with them. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that there'll be a blessing in their generations and beyond, O oh God. Father, that you will make them a vessel and a channel through which blessings will be flowing because anyone who is a channel and a vessel is the first partaker of the blessing so lord i pray that you make them that and more in the mighty name of jesus father i pray that you cause them to increase in wisdom and start to gain in favor before god and before men you're going to cause money to meet money in their pockets blessings to meet blessings in their life favor to meet favor in their lives even as you clothe them with the garment of praise honor and favor in the mighty name of jesus lord i pray oh god that whatever the lady hands on will prosper Wherever they tread their feet upon, give it to them as a possession in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you enlarge their coast, O God, and give them great, great, great breakthroughs. Shut every door that is not of you and open every door that no man can shut in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, O God, that you're going to bless them tremendously in a very special way. Father, I also pray, O God, that you're going to... <clears throat> You're going to grant them opportunities that no other person can, which will cause them to stand out and not just feed them because they were called to stand out, especially in their sphere of specialty. Lord, I pray, oh God, that each and every one would know what you call them, why you created them, and they will stick to it and focus all their energies towards doing that and making it happen in the mighty name of Jesus, even as you back them up. So, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to open their eyes to see those they are supposed to be destiny helpers to and strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right as much as you're also going to cause their own destiny helpers to strategically position themselves east west north and south in every area around their lives so that when the time is due lord they will be able to truly 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 help them when they cry out for help that when they cry out for help help is going to be instant and very very fast lord i thank you because i know you're a faithful father lord you're the one who lifts one up and brings another down lord we pray that you take them to the top and cause them to permanently stay there because we know you're going to teach them the strategies and techniques and methods that allows them not only to get to the top but to get there and stay there permanently lord we trust you we trust your strategies we trust you we know that you're a faithful god we know that you're a faithful father take preeminence put now forever mom because you deserve it Father, I pray, O oh God, that even as you open these new pages in their lives, write beautiful stories, stories that will bring transformation, will bring singing, rejoicing, and dancing, perfect all that concerns them, give them a Psalms 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, dancing, and rejoicing. And if by your grace you tarry to come, they'll be here same time next year, giving testimonies of all the amazing and beautiful things you've done in their lives. Father, we thank you because we know you've heard an answer. We thank you because we know all these birthday prayers are sealed with the blood of Jesus and that every single person who was born on this day is getting higher and higher, getting stronger and stronger, moving from glory to glory. Their light is shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day and their gifts will make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Thank you, Lord, because I know You've heard and answered. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives, as we pray, let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives.
Amen, people, amen. And it's a chapter a day, your favorite program with Princess Beats and Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> and we're reading for Samuel chapter 30, and it has 31 verses. Let's get the Bible party started, people. Are you ready? <clears throat> ready or not, here I come. People permit me. I want to drink water. I'm feeling like my throat is dry. I don't know why. I think I've drunk a lot of water today. Okay. So, let's get the Bible party started, people. Are you ready? Ready or not, here I come. First Samuel chapter 30. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein they slew not any either great or small but carried them away and went on their way so david and his men came to the city and behold it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive then david and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep and David's two wives were taken captive, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the effort. And Abiathar brought thither the effort to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the six hundred men that were with him, and came to the brook Bessel, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men, for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Bessel. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread, and he did eat, and they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of a cake of figs, and two clusters of raisins and when he had eaten his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights and david said unto him to whom belongest thou and whence art thou and he said i am a young man of egypt seven to an amalekite and my master left me because three days agone i fell sick we made an invasion upon the south of the Cherethites and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burnt Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God, that thou wilt neither kill me, nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them save four hundred young men which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them neither small nor great neither sons nor daughter neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them david recovered all and david took all the flocks and the heads which they drave before those other cattle and said this is david's spoil and david came to the two hundred men which were so faint that they could not follow david 
whom they had made also to abide at the brook Basar. And they went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men and men of Belia, of those that went with David, and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered, save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Then David said, Ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord had given us, who had preserved us, and delivered the company that came against us into our hand. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarried by the stuff, they shall part alike. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. And when David came to Ziklag, he sent of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends, saying, Behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord, to them which were in Bethel, and to them which were in South Ramoth, and to them which were in Jarti, and to them which were in Aror, and to them which were in Sif Sifmoth, and to them which were in Estemor, and to them which were in Rakal, and to them which were in the cities of the Jaramilites, and to them which were in the cities of the Canaanites, and to them which were in Horma, and to them which were in Chorashan, and to them which were in Atach, and to them which were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were wont to hunt. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, people. <clears throat> so let's get this done. Let's get this going. Let's get this. Um, let's get this party on. Let's get this party coming. So that's First Samuel chapter 30. What did you learn? What did you learn? Welcome, Monsieur Serge. Bienvenue. Que Dieu te bénisse. Thank you for coming. We're glad to have you on the chapter today. And your contributions will be very, very much welcome. We'll be delighted to have you on. You can also request to come live to be a part of the program, okay? So it's not just about writing in the comment section. You can also request to come live and you'll be live on the show. Okay. So David and his men, they had already told them that, okay, they should go back. They should not go and shred. So, so see, see how interesting this is, right? David and his men were supposed to have gone for battle. They had to go fight against um, the Israelites, right? Okay. So they left and went to the battlefield. When they got close to the battlefield, the princes of the Philistines said they don't want them to participate in that fight. They should go back. Probably if David... And the other men did not go back. They would have never known that they've taken their wives. And who knows what would have happened. And maybe these people would have gone far away with their wives and their children and their daughters and their sons and all that. Sometimes we have to believe it's really all about is working for our good. So my morning devotions today is just in line with every single thing. What I've done today, the things that have happened to me and even the scripture. David was not really excited or really happy about the fact that the princes of Israel, of the Philistines were saying he should not go and battle with them. And they were saying that not because he was truly not trustworthy. They were saying that just because of fear. They were saying that just because they had chosen to give him a bad name so that they can send him away. They were saying that because they just never trusted him. They were using his past to judge him which is a very wrong thing. We've learned, we've learned that several times. That don't judge people with their past. Just as you have changed, there are some things that you did in your past as well that you're not proud of. There are some things you did in your past that you don't like and you don't want people to tag you with those things, especially now that in your present, you don't do those things no more. You're not that person no more. So you don't want people to tag you with your past. So why do you keep tagging other people with their past? 
Do unto others what you want them to do to you. You can't be treating people funny and you expect to be treated right. It doesn't work like that, people. It doesn't work like that. We can't be treating people that funny way and we expect to be treated right. Mm -mm. It need to work so. It need to work so. So, yeah, um, this is what happened. So now... It was working for their good that they were sending them back they were sending them back so that they should get home in time and then they'll be able to go and save these people that they saved eventually because if they were in battle though they've been fighting though they've not known what is happening here and by the time they come back from battle you know how battles used to take a while by the time they come back from battle though they've already taken their wives i'm sure some will probably be married, some they would have just done, maybe raped some and all those things. It's really bad. It's just sad. I don't even want to think of the scenarios because it's not going to be funny at all. But they were sent back and they came back just in time. So it was, a, it, it was like it was not a good thing. He had prepared for battle. He wanted to really fight to prove himself to these people. But no, there was something more pressing and more urgent that was happening in Ziklag where he was staying that... He had to go and address. So that was God. That was God actually making the princes to just not be in favor with him so that he's going to get back in time to go and bring his family members. That's by the way. So now let's see. So you see, every single thing that happens to you works for your good. You, you had better just believe it for your sanity's sakes. That it doesn't matter how bad things are looking. It doesn't matter how bad things are going. It is working for your good. Somehow, somehow, God is going to use that thing for your good. And you might not see it right now. It might not look like it immediately. But you would eventually see it. You would eventually see it. I'm sure when they were coming back, they were feeling really downcasted. How they are not going for battle. But this was battle they went for. And it was battle for a better cause. And they had a better win. You know? They had a better win. So sometimes God can tell you that, oh, you're going to go for battle. You're going to fight the battle. You're going to win. And you're thinking, oh, it's a particular battle. Meanwhile, there's a different battle. <clears throat> you might be going to God for the battle of me. I wanted to be popular on social media. I was going for the battle of popularity on social media. God says, la, la, oh. It's not the way you're thinking about it. Oh, ra, ra, oh. It's not that way. And everything changed. You can be going for the um, battle of you want to get married. And God wants you to be an evangelist. La, la, oh, the marriage will not happen now. He will just make you skyrocket and be traveling from here to there to there to there to there to do evangelism. You can be going for a child. You want a child. And God will say, rah, rah, oh, mm -mm. you have to go to orphanages and go and take, for, take care of orphans. Like, see. I don't know what your battle is that you want to go for. And God has already told you that you're going to win the battle. And then you're thinking, it's the battle that is on your mind. Mm -mm. It wasn't the battle against Israel that he was going to win. It was the battle against this Amalekite or his Philistines who came and did this thing. Was it the Philistines or it was Amal Amalekites? The Amalekites, yes. So the Amalekites did this thing. The battle was supposed to be against the Amalekites, not against the Israelites. God did not want David to soil his image. He knew he was going to fight a battle that day, but that was not the battle. It wasn't the battle against the Israelites. So simply, simply, they had to send him away. In sending him away, they were sending him to go fight the battle that God had ordained and prepared for him to fight that day. So they come back. This is quite intriguing. And that's how we are. That's how human beings are. This is quite intriguing. So I'll connect it to something that I'm doing right now and, and tell us what I mean by that. Um, so, for example, they've come back. They've arrested everybody. They've captured everybody's um, wife and children. David's inclusive. Oh, it's not as if David's wife and children were there. So they're mad at him now. David's own wife and children were also captured. They were taken captive. Ah, all of them are in pain, Sha. Should David's own pain be different? Mm -mm. His pain won't be different from the other people. Plus, he even had two wives. Some people, maybe they had just one wife. He had two wives. So he had to worry about two people. Some people might have just had one wife. Some people might have not even had wives. Do you know what these people decided to do? That they, they wanted to stone him. She is David who made the Amalekites to come and invade their land and take their wives and children. Even if it was David's plan, and then David would cause them to, to also arrest his own wife and children. 
Now what for people who are seen this blame game eh, it has never helped anybody. It has never worked for anybody. If they sat there and continue blaming David and David too was just feeling bad and feeling downcasted, nothing would have happened though. All of them would have lost. If they still finished stoning David self, it would not bring their wives and children back. So that was a very stupid route to take. That was a very stupid thought to begin with. But you get as the devil did do you when he wants to put you in one kind of ugly position it get the way you think there is a way you just think that is just out of place you just know that this is daft this is outright stupid you come back together it's not like david was somewhere and then that happened and then they say oh maybe david planned it or something david was with you guys you all are coming back from a place that you have been rejected and then you're coming to your house and then you realize that this and this and this has been taken away and then you're struggling to blame David for the scenario, for something that he wasn't even part of, something that his own family also got affected. So I'm saying this to say, we're doing trading. All of us are in Forex. So you, 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 you come into Forex, you trade, 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 you make profits, you're excited. Then when you make losses, you try to blame me for introducing you to Forex. You have a problem. You have a serious problem. And the funny is, Blaming me is not going to bring the money that you lost. That's just the truth. We have to get to that place. See, in this life, eh, you take calculated risks. There are some risks that are going to affect you negatively. And there is nothing nobody can do about it. There are some risks that are going to affect you way beyond your positivity. And there is nothing nobody can do about it. And the funny thing is that when you're making profits, you don't really see me to be like, oh, I was part of this. I was the one who introduced you. You don't really thank God that God made this possible. When problems start coming, you're like, God, why? When you were making profits, did you say thank you, Lord? When you were making profits, did you come and tell me, Princess, thank you for introducing me to this thing? No, you didn't. Or oh, you didn't. You sure didn't. But now that you're losing, it's like Clinton is a problem. If this thing finally disappears, God forbid, I pray it doesn't. But if it finally disappears, I know a lot of people who would still come and insult me that I put them to scam and all those kinds of things. We all got scammed, my darling. It's not just you. So what we should be doing is asking God and figuring out how he can help us to get the matter resolved, just like David did. That was what they were supposed to do. Not walking around and looking for who to blame and who not to blame. Life in itself is a risk, my dear. Not taking a risk is a risk. <clears throat> Not taking a risk is a risk. So you can't be blaming people for things that happen to you. So you think I'll come and tell you about a good business investment and we both invest in it and then it gets depleted or it doesn't go as we thought, as it, it was planned, as it was presented to us. Then you blame me for introducing you. Really? You're an adult. I gave you something. You looked at it and you saw that it was beneficial to you and you took the risk to join it. So you can't blame me. Someone also explained it to me and I saw that it was good and I was ready to take the risk. So it's the same thing. I explained it to you. So why? Why do people, why do people always have this tendency of like, if I explain something to you and it's good, you don't have any time to look back at me. When it's bad, that's when you have time to blame me. There are things we tell people to do. Some of them are good. They don't do them. They go ahead and do the bad things and then they get trouble and then they want to blame someone. Stop blaming people, my dear. You are an adult. You make decisions. It doesn't matter when the devil shoots arrows at you and God also shoots his own arrows at you. It takes you to make a calculated decision from the information that you get. There's so much Jesus can do for you. He says, I put before you this day life and death. Choose life. You will still have to make a choice. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you hear from the devil. It doesn't matter what the angels are saying. You will still make a choice. And that's why till today, some people have still not accepted the free gift of Jesus Christ. They've not accepted the death on the cross. They've not accepted that free gift of the only begotten son of God. Doesn't negate the fact that it's there. It's there. So someone was asking me about the veracity and how 
authentic this thing is i say from the best of my knowledge and my own little research that i've done and the documents that i've asked for and they've given me i believe it's authentic and then they say oh what about its sustainability i said it's forex it's it's a worldwide thing it's not a somebody's personal thing that tomorrow it can just disappear it is a worldwide thing so i can't say much but that's the least that i can say and so what about if it disappears well it's not disappeared yet it's still here so i'm making the most of it while it's here covid has taught us a bitter lesson a lot of people thought that their eight to five jobs were more sustainable than any other thing but some people lost their job till date they've not recovered because some of those companies have not recovered either so nothing is as sustainable as we think so you can't be asking me on somebody's business i'm not even working in the company to begin with and trust me even people who work in some companies who are trusted employees sometimes they also get laid off they are shocked that the next moment they're calling them and giving them a letter and saying oh we're really sorry we wish we could do this and keep you but we can't there are people who have worked it's like they've given their whole lives in a job in a company and they still end up losing that job they still end up getting laid off my dear not er they, I, I don't even believe there's anything that is sustainable in this life apart from god yes god is a sustainer He's the only true sustainer. He's the only true person that is sustainable. That if you, if you rely on him and you depend on him, he will be there for you till the end. There is no job. There is no business. Because one natural disaster can change a whole lot. We've been trading Forex for the past two months. And about a month ago or two, when Bitcoin bleated, a lot of people have been enjoying Bitcoin, enjoying exorbitant gains and crazy amounts. Bitcoin is sustainable, but this time around, he wasn't so sustainable. He got people crying and weeping. People got money that they had invested slashed in twos and threes. I had a couple of other coins because Bitcoin was dropping. All those other coins were also dropping. So would you now say, oh, or after all the benefits that you've enjoyed from it now it's not a real thing because it had this downfall they are every every kind of thing that could have that kind of flip without you knowing like i said covid had taught us a bitter lesson that even your eight to five job is not as sustainable as you think tomorrow your boss could wake up and say there's no money in the coffers anymore and we can't go on there's ain't, there ain't nothing you can do about it. Was it not looking sustainable for a time? Well, as at the time that is sustainable, my dear, make the most of it. And trust God that you're not going to be the one who is going to fall when it's falling. Oh, yeah. When the first bleating of Bitcoin happened, I removed some of my coins and put in Forex. So when it was bleating the second time, it didn't affect me as much oh yeah that's the truth but there's some people who see how their money's on there so would they say the thing is fake it's the same thing the kind of gains we're really getting really really big gains when we just started forex but when the russia ukraine thing happened the gains were not as much we gain every single day but the gains are not as much like exorbitant as they were apart from this season that it has started coming back again i don't know if it's just for me that god is favoring me because it's our fairy tale season or it's just that the markets are really beautiful i don't know which is which but one thing i know for sure is that i'm thanking god so trust me god can make you move from one place to another to do something and of course some people that you introduce to those things will still want to blame you when things turn around when things are good they don't even know you even though you introduce them to it when things are bad oh everybody's pointing fingers at you these people have been with david they fought battles and they've won with time without number and then all of a sudden they're coming back together with david inclusive and they've taken their wives and people away and they're blaming david like who does that but we do that every day 
someone invites you and tell you about a business opportunity and then the business fails maybe it starts you enjoy a little bit of profit here and there and there and then the business fails you're blaming the person like seriously take calculated risks my dear if you're not very good at taking risks then don't do we win some we lose some that's how risk takers are and only risk takers are wealthy people the rest are not yes so man lumani fred says thank you thank you for coming first of all yes my dear only god is truly sustainable covid for real taught us that i'm telling you it taught us a bitter lesson i mean i've i've, I've heard friends talk about what they've gone through what they are going through even right now you'll be amazed you'll be in awe and you would have all kinds of reasons to thank god for wherever you are right now because i am holding on to that particular scripture that says when they say there's a casting down we are going to say there's a lifting up i'm holding on to the scripture that says i'm an ambassador of christ because an ambassador your economy is not dependent on the economy of the world my economy is dependent on the economy of heaven and the economy of heaven does not lack so i don't care what is going on in the world i know that god is going to sustain me and he is doing that perfectly he is doing that perfectly. I wouldn't lie to you guys. Since this pandemic happened, I have not felt, it has not been to me like something is going on. It has not. I wouldn't lie to you guys. Not in any way. And it looks like my responsibilities are adding. Funny enough, it feels like my responsibilities are adding. But God is just making it look like it's a flip of a finger. And everything is resolved. Everything is solved. That is a practical experience of the scripture. Because I know the scripture. Because I'm holding on to it. Because I'm bringing it back to God. The Bible says he will exalt his word higher than his name. What? And his name is the name above every other name? Are you kidding me? Take God's word back to him. Sometimes we just pray and miss. Sometimes we just cry. Sometimes we just grumble. Sometimes we just murmur. Those things don't bring results. It's the word of God that brings results. And that's why we're crying out every day. Study the word of God for yourself. Have a personal relationship with God for yourself. It feels like we're just pouring water on the deck's back. Well, if you don't do it, it ain't going to work for you. But me who is doing it, it's working for me. And I believe that's exactly what is happening to some of these big pastors and big men of God. They practice what they preach. It's working for them. And then the people under them ain't practicing what they are preaching. And it's not working for them. And people are struggling to blame the pastors. That the pastors are scammers. Do you know how many books some of these pastors write? And they sell them and put these monies in orphanages and put this money in philanthropic works. Are you kidding me? Then you think God is not going to bless them? The Bible says give and it will come back to you good measure. They that give bountifully shall reap bountifully. They that give um, 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 much shall reap much. They that give joyfully shall reap joyfully. What are you talking about? And harvest is always greater than the seed sown. So you don't expect someone who sits every time that he sells his books and stuff and gives like a million or two million to orphanages or philanthropic works not to be blessed. You gotta be joking and the joke is on you. It doesn't happen like that. We don't know things that these men of God go through. People don't know what I'm going through here right now. And I'm trusting God. I'm believing him. And I'm getting into trades. Sometimes it's so risky. Your heart is going to so flip. And you're feeling like, oh my God, Lord, help me. You're praying and you're calling on God. And he's doing miracles for you. And you're getting good trade results. And you're getting good money in a very short time. And then people will just come and be talking gibberish in your ears. They don't know the time that you are taking to be there and you are tense and you are getting all worked up and you are getting all scared. And then the, whole, the Lord was comforting you. The Lord was giving you wisdom. The Lord was giving you grace to do the thing and do it well. And then he gives you a win. The Bible says Paul preaches, Paul plants, the other one waters and God gives the increase. It's God who gives the increase, my dear. The broker gives a signal. We get on there to trade. It's God who gives the increase, my darling. That's what I know. I don't know for other people that might be trading normally, but me, I know it's God who gives the increase. 
the broker is like Paul, the other one, me, I'm like Apollos, and then God gives the increase. It's on you. It's based, it's based on you. How you see things, that's how you're going to get them. As a man thinks in his heart, so we see. I think that that is a perfect scenario of Paul, Apollos, and Jesus giving the increase. So me, Apollos, I'm watering by getting on there and trading. And someone will come and tell me stories like, oh, if it's easy and fast money, then you should be dashing it. Oh, really? If everybody who was making easy and fast money was dashing it, the people will never have money. Because people will always be there who will be lazy about and wanting to be dashed money. Me, I need the gift fish. It pain you, it pain you. There's nothing you can do about it. You want fish, I go teach you how to fish. If you don't want to fish, you go hungry. The Bible says, eh, we should not give food. He who does not work should not eat. Nobody will come and be quoting me scripture. Me too, I'm reading scripture. So if there is a way for you to work and get money, you will work. If you want money from me, you will work. I'm not lazy, nobody. I remember the time when God was telling me that I'm enabling laziness. I'm looking at these people in my family and they don't have anything. They, like They're going through a whole lot. Like They don't have anything and then I have to give them some money at the end of the month. I have to give them some money at the end of the month. And um, I was feeling bad. I, so the Holy Spirit started telling me that I should stop giving the money. I was like, huh? Say I should stop giving the money. I'm like, why? He said, you're enabling laziness. Because if you keep giving these people the money, the people will not get up from the cell for themselves and do something. They will not get up and work. I was like, God, are you... Has God ever lied? Has God ever failed? The time I stopped, I was shocked that these people could work. Because they got up and started doing stuff. I was like, oh, really? That's true. But originally, I was giving them money and thinking I was helping them. But no. I was helping them into their failure. I was helping them into being lazy. I was helping them into laziness. So sometimes it's not all the, the help that we give that is really help. Let the people learn how to work and earn. So when I post my things on my wall and I'm saying I'm making money, come to my inbox to get money, you won't get pim. You will not get a dime. You don't want to work. You don't go get the money. It's easy. And, and I don't even know how people do it. But me, when you work your money on anything, you enjoy it. I mean that day, you love it. You love it. Ha, ah, my God. What are you talking about? I have like 26 or 27 people with me who are trading honestly. They, they started and they were just telling me that, oh, they don't know anything about this. I said, me too, I started though. I was learning on the go. I knew nothing about it. The little that they showed me, I saw it, it worked. I, I knew that I could do it. I started doing it. And I, God has been showing me different things while I'm going and going and going on there. He's pushing me. And these people are joining me and they're learning and they're doing it big time. There are some people that doubt that. Some people have said all kinds of things. Adi, is this stopping us from making our money? Well, I'm making our money. I enjoy, you know. <laughs> she be doubting. Doubt you're doubting. Jesus came and died on the cross for your six and mine. I be I know people who are still doubting to today. Does it negate the fact that Jesus died and his power, his blood is working? I'm a living testimony that the thing is working. So he who does not believe it does not stop the power from working. It's that simple. Anyways, let's come back to David. So they were planning to stone David. As if David was the one who carried their wives and children. We all did for the same possible. You're planning to deal with me. Like I'm the one who carried us and put us in this pot soup. Anyways, David knew where to go to. And it's to God. I said God is the only sustainable person. He's the only one who can sustain you. And man, Luna Rivers, her mindset. I see it. Some people's mindset is warped. On a serious note. They need factory resets. And then she said, not that everyone will even teach others oh, how to fish. Some will keep enjoying the catch for themselves. I'm telling you, my sister. I am telling you. I'm so surprised. And the fun is, it's for free. Oh. Me, I put videos out there. I've shown people, even I've traded live. I've shown people even screenshots from my own account and stuff like that. Just to make them know that this thing is plain and clear. Oh. Some people are still saying all kinds of jazz. Jazz things that I don't even want to believe. Someone say if it's easy 
and it's fast then you should be able to dash people i said i won't dash you because you want me to dash you i'll dash money when the holy spirit tells me to so you cannot even come and frighten me here with this talk that you're saying eh come and make it to and then some other person said something very stupid i was like oh so if you have all the money in the world and you're putting the money there and it's multiplying so fast and going why are you not just putting your money my money no rich and me putting my money all of my money eh, and multiplying it does not stop you from also putting your money and also multiplying it so that's why i'm telling you too so if you have money come and put your own and multiply me i'm putting all my own is multiplying if you want to put all of your own too it will not stop you from multiplying it's just like it's just like saying that if god bless me now with two million he will not have enough money to bless you too with two million if you need two million or if he blesses me 100 million, he cannot bless you now with 50 million because he will not have enough. <laughs> so to see you now, you find her. She be me take my mouth. Go to tell people I want to teach them how to fish. She I could just be eating my money small, 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 small in my own corner. Hey, but I'm still eating my money, Sha. Because whether they believe it or not, I am still eating my money. So I don't even have power. I don't even have strength to bother anybody or to bother myself about all these people ah i have so much to do now focus on my trade and make my money Sha. so david knew exactly where to go to and it was to god you need to go to god you need to so go to god when things start looking that way when things start looking hard you go to god and ask him those questions lord do you want me to do this? Do you want me to go for it? Do you want me to take the next step? Do you want me to move from this job to this other one? Do you want me to move from this country to this country? Do you want me to? You need to go to God and ask him. When that boss is being just unnecessarily annoying, you need to ask God before you move. The boss might be annoying. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to move jobs. Maybe it's your training process on how to deal with a difficult person because maybe your husband might be a difficult person. You have to learn how to deal with a difficult person because maybe you eventually live with a difficult person. Just too many things are, are, are connected to whatever you're going through. But the one thing that is sure and definite is that it is going to work for your good as long as you're a child of god anything you're going through god is going to turn it to work for your good you have to believe that you have to believe that because it's true and so david goes to god and asks oh am i going to overtake if i go to these people will i recover or will i overtake them and everything and of course the lord says yeah go you overtake, you recover all. Okay, so they start going on and you go to God. You've had these difficult times and you have this difficulty going on and then you're asking God what you need to do and how you need to go about it to get it resolved and all. And God is giving you the answer and telling you that, oh, you're going to get victorious in it. You're going to come out victoriously. You're going to come out in grand style. You're going to get it right and all those things. Don't worry, my daughter, I'm with you all the way. And so David starts going. They decide that, okay, they're going to go ahead and go to fight these people. But David pursued now. He had 400 men. 200 stayed behind, which were so faint that they could not go over, of course. The people were tired. It's, they, they're just sometimes like that you're tired. I said there are days that I get so exhausted that I've cheated myself of sleep. I've cheated myself of so many things. And I'm just so exhausted that they... When I say, let me just lay on my bed for five minutes and relax, I wake up the next day because my body has to consciously fight me and take the sleep that I've been owing it for the number of days. I mean, there are some days it was so bad. Sometimes there were some days that I would sleep for just two hours in 24 hours. There are some days that I barely slept. There are some days that I'll sleep for 30 minutes. Some days I'll sleep for one hour in 24 hours. <laughs> I said, God is just spitting me because what if that day that that sleep takes itself, it's a working day. What am I going to tell my boss that I was exhausted and I slept off? It has happened to me but on weekends. Oh. And I told God that he should help me not to be doing that. 
because I, I might think I'm strong or oh, I'm doing this I'm doing that I'm doing that it's affecting my body in one way or the other it's not a good thing must we keep sinning so grace may abound of course not so should we should I go now because they say um, we shall trample on serpents and scorpions and they will not hurt us and we shall drink deadly things and they will not do I'm going to carry dirty water now and drink because I know that if I drink it it will not no you can't be doing things willfully when you know they're wrong it's wrong it is wrong that's not how it works so david now goes on and takes this man the ones that were tired he actually left them behind and then the ones that were still energetic he had to carry them on and go with them and so they found an egyptian of course one thing leads to another one thing will happen to somebody to somebody to somebody just to work in your favor your destiny helpers are going to be this this, this they're going to be strategically positioned to help you when the time is right and believe you me some of these destiny helpers may not look like it imagine an egyptian servant who was hungry he had been hungry for three days he had not even eaten egyptian for that matter one of those people who joined the crew and came and took david's people he's now sick and he needs help and it's david who has to help him <laughs> See, your destiny help us. Some of them will not look like it. So you better be vigilant. You better tell God to enlighten the eyes and ears of your understanding. So that you will know. You will know. Because some people expect that when they call them destiny helpers, they should look in one glitz and glamorous way. Oh, he's a destiny helper. He's supposed to have now. Which kind of destiny helper be this? The one where you don't faint. He never chop for three days. Hi, go here, let me. This is David who was coming from war. He had um, food. He had this. He had a little thing. How this one who has not eaten for three days help me? <laughs> if David was like some of us today, eh, he would not have met those people. That's another test of your resolve. When you're going through hard times. Are you just rude to people? Are you just mean to people? Are you just self-centered? You're so concerned about yourself. You're not thinking about any other person. Even when you're in difficult moments, can you help another person who is in need? Child of God, that might be the key to your next level. It's not might. In this case, it was the key to him meeting the people that he had to meet to fight and destroy them to collect his people back. What if he ignored him? What if they ignored this man? What if they got angry and wanted to revenge? Because this is one of the person. He was part of them. Yes, let him just even die. He deserves to die. Doesn't he? He does. That they came and burnt their city and all those things. The man should go. Like naturally speaking, the man should just go. He should just die already. Should be when he was burning my house. Wasn't he thinking? Let him die already. In fact, this is punishment said for him coming to destroy my land. Mm -mm. It was God who made it that way and allowed him. Some people will go through some tough time for you to meet them so that they will take you to the next place that God wants you to go. Like this Egyptian servant, he was supposed not to have been sick. But for David's sakes and the people who were with David, he had to be sick <clears throat> so that David will come and manifest the love of God that will melt his heart and then he will become loyal to David some of us will go for evangelism you see somebody hungry you're saying it is well with you the Lord will provide you have money in your pocket that God has given you the money to buy food and give to this person let the person eat so that they'll be drawn to you they'll listen to that message and they'll be transformed <clears throat> The reason why they will listen to the gospel and listen keenly and diligently is because they have eaten. Somebody will not be there hungry. The stomach is growling and making blah, 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 all these funny, funny sounds. And you're telling them that it is well with you. The Lord is a provider. The Lord. And look at you. Which kind of provider you talk about? Provider that I'm not eating for three days. Are you, are you joking or something? Are you all right? Are you, are you even okay? And the money that God wants you to use to, to bring that person over is in your pocket. You're being greedy and selfish. You can't buy the person food. You're talking about God who provides. See, eh? 
the way God can spank some of us, eh? We need we need spanking. I mean that we need serious factory resets. And we say we're children of God. For God so loved the world that he gave. Even God himself is telling us that when you profess love, action should follow it. We want to do it our own way, our own. This is our own kind of Christianity. We're only talking love, talking, talking, talking love. Action, no day. Nothing to back it. Nothing to show for it. God himself, for God so loved the world. After he tell we say he love, he give. Your own, you only want to speak it. If there's no action backing, it'll not be love. We should still take it to the lab and check what it is. Ha, people. Now, wow. David, even in his difficult time, he saw somebody in a difficult time and he was ready to help. They didn't ask it, that man anything before. They helped him before they asked him anything. So it could have been anybody as much as it could have even been just somebody who was not even going to help them. It would have just been somebody who fell on the wayside and had issues and all that. He didn't ask before. He helped the man before. So it was just a lifestyle. It was part of David's lifestyle to help people who were in need. That's the simple truth. It was part of David's lifestyle to help people who are in need. And this brought him to get to the place where... He had to win where he had to fight the battle and take his family back and his people back and take the spoil back. Some of your destiny helpers will not look like it. Do not be proud. Do not minimize people. Do not look down on people. That you're going through stuff doesn't mean that God cannot use you to be a blessing to someone's life. You see the woman, the widow, she had just a small flower to go and make her bread and let her son and her eat and die. But she had to cater for the needs of the prophet. Prophet said, make me cake. Let me eat. And then you and your son will eat remainder. <laughs> I said there are some people who are destiny helpers who don't look like it. You even get flour for fee make bread. Servant of God no get nothing. He's coming to you to use their small flour to make him bread. He doesn't have pim. <laughs> like, they don't even look like it. <laughs> How would he help me? Me I have flour to even make cake. Let me and my son. He do want to get nothing. He's coming and talking stories. What jazz is this man talking about? But we've known and known enough to obey servants of God. So we obey, Sha. As they speak, we obey. And it says, and they found, an, okay, so we've gone past that stage. And then they helped the man. And so when they helped the man, they gave him cake. They gave him all the delicious things and all the nice things. That's what God expects of you. Buy the person some really good food. Let the person eat. And then when they finish eating, they'll be drawn to listen to you. Because that hunger thing that is distorting their minds or their reasoning or their brains to function right is being taken care of. So they would easily listen to you now. And they will listen attentively for that matter. <laughs> and this man says, oh, behold, see, we need to be good at making bargains and interceding for ourselves and making deals. We need to be good at making deals, people. We have to get good at making deals. You hear? We really have to be good at making deals. Oh, my. See, you needed to see these people here. The man said, please. You guys should, first of all, promise you're not going to kill me. Two, promise you ain't going to give me back to my master. Who will see gold and want to go for brass? Except the person is not right. <laughs> Say, people who were supposed to have killed me because I entered their land, burned this, this, they gave me food to eat. And that was not just all. They didn't just give me any kind of food. Though. They gave me bread and water. After they gave me raisins, they gave me cake they hmm there's something about these people i need to connect to it 
He connected. And it worked for him. So if you guys are not giving me back to my master, oh. now pin I don't pin here be this. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. I'm with you guys till the end. So I'm not going back to that master. And you guys aren't going to kill me. And I'll take you to the place. Asha, Kuku, take us. David needed the people now. Uh, David knows David knows what it takes to be on exile. David knows what it takes to be pursued by other people. David knows what it takes to have been left hanging. He has been left hanging several times. He is actually even on exile. Shebi get as he been an exile maker, he did stay for Ziklak. He was supposed to have been staying in Israel in the ah, in the palace actually. But he's on exile. He's in Ziklak until they can come and catch his people and go with. If he was in the place where he had to be, that would not even happen. Because he would have been surrounded by guards and all those things. Plus, he's a man of war. He would. Have, it's not. They would have been on guard. It can't happen now. So he understood. He could feel that man's pain. He had experienced that kind of thing before. When he's left hanging. When he had nothing. And then people had to help him. So you see, some things you go through in your life. It's not because God was not able to save you from those things. No. God wants you to experience the things so that you'll be able to help some other person when they come out. I've said my story here time without number. I don't know if I've said it over and over. It was to people personally or it's here on the live stream. But I said over and over, when God broke me, I used to be very judgmental. I used to believe that if you're a child of God, you cannot make mistakes. You cannot falter. You cannot sin. You cannot... I used to believe that though. So when I see people fall in maybe fornication or adultery or anything or any mistake they stole, they lied, they did, I'll be like, were well, these ones ever born again? Until it got to me. <sighs> when you know that this thing is wrong and then your mind is still just telling you that you have to do it, like you don't have a choice. If you don't do it, you not. Hmm. I got there my own possible. I remember when I was asking the Holy Spirit what this was all about. He sent me to Luke 32, 22. I think it's 32, 22, 22, 32. But this is what it says. It says, Peter, the devil wants to save you like wheat. But I pray for you that when you come out. Ah, Jesus, now she can't play with that. When you come out. I pray for you that you not fall. Why? He had the power to pray for Peter not to fall. He says, no, I pray for you that when you come out, you'll be able to help the brethren. So Peter wasn't going through that thing because God was not able to save him. Mm -mm. God wanted him to experience it so that he should come out from... Me and Peter will know how to judge people. God called something unclean and it's still God that is calling it clean. Peter argued God oh, for a dream. He argued God. Said, mm -mm. These things, they've told us that they're not clean. God says, me, I'm telling you now that it is clean. Don't call what I've called clean unclean. That was God showing him in a vision that he was going to go and preach to the Gentiles. Paul was called to preach to the Gentiles. And the Gentiles were not supposed to have had an opportunity with God. It had to be the Jews. But Paul was called to preach to the Gentiles. So it not be funny. Or it's Paul or it's Peter, whichever one that was. So I prayed for you. How were you for? Hmm. So there are some times that you go through some tough times just so that you can help others who are going through the same. And that's why David did not even blink. He did not even flicker when he was helping this man because he has been in that situation before. He has been on the run several times and other people have helped him too. He has been in a place where he was moving from one wilderness to another, one cave to another. So he knows what it feels like when somebody is stranded, like that sick Egyptian was stranded. And so he helped him. Me too, sis. I used to be judgmental like the Pharisees. <laughs> My sister is the thing. Oh, I, sometimes when, you, when you're just a young convert, right? There are a lot of things that you just understand. You just get immediately. You know, you're just doing. You're just on zeal. You're just on fire for God. You get. So you start feeling like, hmm. Why? Why are these people not getting it? Why are they not understanding it? It looks like they've never been saved. They're saved though, my sister. That's why the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just forgive us. It's only someone who knows that sin is sin that will confess now. So this thing is much more even for children of God than for 
unbelievers this particular scriptures if we confess our sin because it's me who knows the difference i know that is when i've experienced christ that i know that this one is sin and this one is not a sinner knows only sin they don't know about god they don't know those things so it's you a christian who knows that this one is sin this one is god so when you sin you need to confess there is a difference with falling in sin and living in sin Living in sin, you are just backslided. You are a backslider, my sister dearest. My brother, you are a backslider if you're living in sin. But if you fall in sin mistakenly or something, it's a different ball game entirely. And the Holy Spirit will so convict you, you just can't even stay in it for long. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. If your conscience and self can police you, the Holy Spirit is worse than, not worse, it's much more than your conscience. It's bigger than your conscience. So he would so police you and you would have to do it. If you're a genuine child of God, if you're someone who is really saved and you've really accepted Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit can convict you of something and then you don't get it. It's not possible. So he went on and helped this guy and the guy took them. They went on and then they dealt with these people. They won the battle. They got the victory. Oh, someone wants to come on. Mr. Selch wants to come on. Please do. Please do. Your contributions will really be made out. I would really be delighted to have you. <clears throat> so he goes on and then he's like, okay, he has um, gotten to help the man. The man has carried them and gone and shown them where the people are. And David fought just like God told him. He overtook, he recovered all. In fact, way, way, way beyond. He got everything back. And so they went back. Welcome, Mr. Sesh. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Welcome, Tista. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much. It's been like forever. <laughs> okay, yes, long time. I'm, yes. I'm very happy to be part of uh, this video. Oh, I'm glad that and, you're here. Um, I used to listen to you. I, I appreciate a lot. Um, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, because uh, I don't have time um, to, yeah. to be part. Today I'm not um, working, so. Oh, um, that's so good. Thank I'm you not, so much. I am available, so I say, okay. <laughs> But I would like to, because uh, I think the everything that you are doing at the end of the day is to like um, helping us to be good, I would say, good ch children of God, okay, to have a good life, to have a peace oh, yeah. peaceful life, to, to succeed in everything. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah. I know you, okay, and you, you know me, but I would like to say, to speak about something else. Today okay. I am, um, uh, I live in Cairo, okay, in Egypt. Oh, and, that's uh, nice. You moved too. Yes. But uh, um, I know you live in Thailand, that's right? right yeah, now. Thailand. Okay. So maybe you have, um, you might understand what I want to talk about. Okay, go ahead. You know, um, when you were living in our own countries where we met the Lord Jesus and we became a child of God, we used to be involved in our communities okay our bro mm -hmm. with our brother our churches okay doing all those kind of christian activities okay praying oh, yeah. together going to uh, speak about god um um how to say it? all right it was every sunday going to church it was a very nice church a very nice oh, life yeah. And I know now you are living in a other in a foreign in a foreign line. Oh foreign yeah. Land, okay. Another country, and you don't have this same environment that you have when you are in your country. Very true. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there are so you might face so many challenges because yeah. sometimes Satan knows that you are in a weak situation. He can oh, use yeah. everything everything that he has to try to pull you down, okay? And um, what I want to know, when you are like, um, um, because me here, I'm in Cairo now, it's like, it's my uh, fourth year, okay? Wow. Okay, okay, fourth year, it's like, sometimes I feel like, um, I see, 
coming back to my country and try to live my Christian life. Okay. So because I, I, to be honest, I don't have the will to, to learn even, even Arabic I'm here, but uh, that's only the words that I can use to, to, to move forward. Okay, like yeah. go to the shop and what is the price. And, but um, I cannot speak Arabic. I cannot have a conversation with someone about uh, uh -huh. uh, what I think, okay? And yeah. even speaking about Christ to these people is not uh, so easy. Yeah, it's and, not uh, easy. To be, to be honest, I, I don't attend really any church, okay? So oh, yeah. I'm here. Yes, my, so I have my Bible. I have my, my faith in God. I have my conscience, okay? My head. And, so in this case, I know that uh, you know, this morning I was reading the Bible. I was reading, uh, I mean, that yesterday and today. This test of the Bible where um, when God let his people cross the Red Sea. Yeah. And uh, the first people that came to fight against Israel, I don't, in French you say Amalek, I don't know how to say it in English. Uh -huh. Amalek, you know. Yeah. In Genesis, in Exodus um, 18, I think so. Exodus 17. Okay, from yeah. the best verse 8, verse 8, something like that. Okay, they, are, they came to fight against Israel. And um, Moses taught Joshua, okay, choose men, some men, and I will stand on the, on the mountain mm -hmm. with the, 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 how to say, the, the, the French, the stick, I would say, the stick of God. Okay? Yeah, the rod of God. And, uh, and it's the rod, okay. It was, um, and like um, Aaron, and who yeah. was supporting Moses to handle yeah. this rod up because they said that when Moses was tired and the rod came down, Amalek was, yes, Amalek was stronger than Israel. Yeah. But when Moses was holding this, but this rod up, Amalek, uh -huh. Israel was stronger than Amalek. Yeah. So <laughs> in this case, there are two, there are two actions. If Moses alone, if Moses alone was holding this battle and Moses and Joshua were not, were not, were not fighting with the people on the ground, Israel will, will not win, that's right. Oh yeah. And uh, if, if um, Joshua was fighting with the men of Israel, Israel on the land and Moses were on the top to uh, under this road up, Amalek also win over Israel. Yeah. So um, I understood that even Moses alone couldn't handle this alone, this road alone. Oh, yeah. He needed Aaron and who to support him. So I see that a Christian life is very difficult when you are alone. Very true. Okay. It's when true. When you are alone. So I don't know if you have, if you experience, of, once you experience this kind of situation. This is a bit what I am facing in my life, right? <laughs> when I'm in living I so I know that it's good to encourage people. Sometimes there are yeah. people like that in the world. You can yeah. find it, maybe you don't know when you share your video. Maybe someone is Kuwait and uh, no Christian is alone in his faith with God and around yeah. people are Muslim. Maybe someone is somewhere that, that don't worship, we don't believe in God. So I know it's not uh, easy. God may, God knows why, okay? Mm -hmm. We are going through those kind of situations. But my, my preoccupation, my, my, my question is uh, what, how to do? How to, do Okay, okay. so yeah. for starters, I understand perfectly what you're talking about because here I don't go to physical church either, but um, before I didn't even think, like it didn't occur to me that I could actually do online service, but thank God for COVID because COVID made a lot of things to happen because everybody seemingly had to go to online church. And then it dawned on me, like you could be doing church online because one, the first thing was the language barrier. For people yes. who are in places that there's language barrier, it's always a difficulty because even if I go to church, I can't hear anything that they're saying. They're Christians here. They are Christians who are Thai people. Yeah. 
Well, they actually came to my school some time ago. I think it was Christmas or something. They came to give gifts and then the did some sort of, I think it was evangelism mm -hmm. basically. But now if there is a church here that is for, for the Thai nationals, like the ones that are Christians and they go to the church, I wouldn't hear anything. Even if I go to the church, I wouldn't hear anything because I don't understand the language and I don't speak the language. So it's going to be difficult. So I normally used to go to church only once in a while when I actually visit my sister or when I visit my pastor. So I go to church because they they have church in that place. But in my own little um, um, province, it's a small province. I don't, there are no um, churches like where i can hear my language and understand my language so from then the first thing that god helped me with was going to online church sometimes the experience is not as perfect as when you're there physically but at least it's still something because just like um before aside from the fact that you won't hug your brethren or give them high five or you know that kind of have that kind of conversation yes. you still hear the testimonies the bible says that we overcome them by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Mm -hmm. So you still hear those testimonies and you're like, oh yeah, this person is also going through this. This person went through this and the person came out. So it means that what I'm going through as well, I'm going to come out of it. So that's it. When you have an opportunity to be able to talk with one or two persons and ask them what they're going through and then you can pray with them. So I have some friends as well that I've connected with, even on social media. So like once in a while, we'll call each other and just ask how you're doing, what is going on, your spiritual life, what is happening and stuff like that. Sometimes my pastors also call me once in a while. So that's how that's what really, really helps me. That's what really helps me for the most part when I'm here. Aside from that it's really difficult and it's really tricky because sometimes you're just there um you don't see your brethren you know when you're living in the same community and all you see your brethren really going through these things it's real but sometimes when you don't see them it feels like they're just telling you that this is what they're going through but maybe that's not really what they're going through you know like it's just a faith wow. value thing you know but for real like when you're not amongst people even even just friends even just my friends lately i've been um how they call it trimming down my friends i've been selecting the people i spend much time with because even your friends if they're not people who believe in what you believe in and they don't stand for what you stand for yeah you can't really communicate with them you can't really have a conversation with them because they will not be comfortable with your kind of conversation. Neither would you be comfortable with their kind of conversation. Right. So, yeah. Yes. So it gets hard to have a conversation with people that don't believe in what you believe in or stand for what you stand for. And when you get into that kind of conversation, sometimes you come out, you're grieved, your, your spirit feels dry, you know, that kind of thing. So okay. it's for you to consciously so have to get of those people. Yes, the little, the little, um, how to say, the little spirit of God that you have in you, yeah, you don't have to, like, to waste no. this grace. <laughs> so there are people who don't let them even come. You say, that's why you, you live alone. Them. I'm here and people are because my my neighbors, they are all Egyptians. Oh yeah. yeah. You can imagine. So even because sometimes they come to knock my door and some want something, I use my application from my phone and um, try to translate, translate. and <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I'm just not uh, the best, but uh, yeah. I try to handle the situation like that. Sometimes so it's not this very what I'm, I am, yes. So this is what I'm facing, and I try to um, see if there are people around that is that are facing this situation. That's why I'm. Oh yeah, I face the same situation too. I face the same situation too. So I just put one or two, like these few things around me that can help me like in those times. So I have a couple of people like friends that I can call and tell them that, oh, this is what I'm going through right now. What do you think? What are your suggestions? Um, how do you think I can go about this? But for the evangelism, I've stopped feeling guilty because I can't speak the language. There's just no way I can be able to evangelize to a Thai person. But, but do you try to, to learn the, the, the language, the local language? The, I tried, but it's kind of complicated and it's tricky because their language here has things that have to do with intonation. You can pronounce a word, you can say a word, but if you pronounce it wrong... Without the intonation. 
it's very insultive and if you pronounce it right it's a right word so the, the you it one word might have two different sounds okay. like one will be high pitch one will be low pitch and the high pitch will, will mean something good the low pitch will mean something bad and the people take it so personal like i'm like i'm not a national so you should understand with me that i can't be coming to get insulted to you like they don't understand okay. that so sometimes i when i go to the market i point to the things i want and i put on my phone how okay. much at least i know how to say how much i learned that one <laughs> i know how to say how are you i guess I, and then what again As, aside from the other things i just take a picture screenshot it and show it wow. um, do you have this if you have okay i go to the place to the market i point the thing i want or i just pick it up from the shop some of the things have their tags on it but in the like local market like the big market some of the things don't have prices so you'd have to ask they type the numbers on my phone i give you my phone you type the amount and I be okay, that's all. like that. Yes, this kind of like. Yeah. So I sometimes see, it's I very see, challenging like that. So you have to look for all these opportunities. Maybe you have some group, mm -hmm. maybe they're prayer groups or church groups where they give testimonies and stuff like that. And sometimes it can also be very crowdy and very noisy in some of those groups. So I get in and get out and I'm like, no, 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 no. This one doesn't work. And then I just go. So I finally just chose one particular church online and then be attending. So on Sundays, I attend online church. Sometimes it's difficult to attend um, midweek services, like Wednesdays and Fridays, because of the time. The time difference is crazy. Okay. Because I chose the, the church in, back in Africa, not a church here. I choose a church back in okay. Africa. So sometimes the timing is really tricky. Like, before I remember that it's supposed to be service, service is already gone. <laughs> service okay. is already gone. Oh yeah, Mam Lum Anifred says that it is well, sir, be comforted in the fact that you are in Christ and so you're not alone. Yeah, she's also in a place where um, it's like different, but hers is better because I think Dubai has a couple of English people, people speak English there, a couple of people, okay. but even though churches too can be a distance away my church was really far away from a house when i was in dubai um fortunately i joined the choir at some point so the church was taking care of choir members transportation that's how i started going on my own and i was paying my transport myself and then all of a sudden i realized that they were paying for us they said if you are in the choir they'll pay a transport for you that's what god can do though when he sees your desire when he sees your heart he knows that you have a heart for him. You want to serve him. You want to do. He makes some opportunities pop up for you. So that's how I yeah. got online church. I got some of these my amazing friends that we call because, each other, and encourage each other, you know, like that. Because I have um, another challenge. Okay, um, I dream. Okay, I'm, I I have a dream. I okay. need a dream. Um, it's like I was with uh, Duncan William. Oh and, uh, yes, I like too. And, <laughs> and there there were okay. Um, it's like there were two 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 people. Okay, those speaking French and those uh -huh. speaking English. And um, it's like those speaking French could understand. Okay, yeah, and, uh, because it was like in his community. And at the we're together, and those speaking French were leaving the church. Okay, and he told me, "Don't mind them. Focus." on those speaking English because this is what we are going to do now. Oh, yeah. So it's like, for me, it's like God is telling me, okay, mm -hmm. um, okay, focus on, more on your, on your English than, oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah. But um, I'm here, okay, it's, a, it's, it's an Arabic country, it's not an English speaking country. Yeah. Okay? And um, I, okay, from time to time, I, I am I am a call center agent. Okay. okay? And so at first the um I have been I have I got this job just because I speak French. Okay. And it was uh, for French accounts. Okay. Now I am working in a um, bilingual account, okay? And from Okay, speak French and English. We, we, That's cool. Yes. But the English is more than the, the French. It's like oh, really? English. 
Yes. Focus on your English. And sometimes <laughs> it is headache. There are some <laughs> customers that hang up on me. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. When I say, my name is Serge, ta -ta -ta, I say, oh, I want someone to speak English. Please don't hang up. And hang up. They because just it doesn't believe my think it's French. My doesn't believe yes, my accent, my background, it doesn't believe my English. So oh my sometimes God. I feel like I it's like I'm hurt. I say, Oh, I feel uh, and um I it's like English has become so difficult for me. No, so, uh, yeah, because uh, I say okay, and um if for my job and for my job, things are so, so, so easier. Okay? Okay, let me break. For my job, things are so, so, so easier. Okay? And because they say, I work like in, um, 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 for more than internet. Okay? Oh, so okay. The, the expressions are very simple. You speak like, you say, um, you say to the person, please um, reset the modem and um, power cycle the modem. But yeah. if they cannot understand this kind of English, how are they, how are they going to understand? And uh, if I try to preach the word of God in English, I know. this is my, <laughs> so this my concern. Okay. So that's so why. Somebody Somebody just said something here that is confirming what you're saying. Like, basically, um, Mam Lum Anifred, she says, and as for evangelism, don't mind. You might not evangelize verbally, but your lifestyle and character might be speaking out to someone without you even knowing. That's perfect. That's, that's I think, like, this is God still just giving me a reminder, and that's also... A message that I got some time ago when I was really worried about, oh, but I'm here. And sometimes people keep telling me that, oh, have you started evangelizing? You know how people from home they'll be calling you and telling you, have you started evangelizing? Have you preached to anybody? Did, did, have you started a home cell? I'm like, it's not like in other countries. These people don't speak English. They don't understand English. What are you talking yeah. about? And so I started getting worried and this is almost the exact same words. It's almost exact same words that I had that be a living epistle read of men. It's a scripture in the Bible. I don't know where it is. Some people will never read the Bible. Some people will never hear the Bible. Your lifestyle is going to so preach to them that they would have an encounter somehow, you know, like Saul who became Paul, nobody preached to him. He just had an encounter with God when he was going to this place. So, and that was it. He got connected now to someone who was a Christian. Um, how they call this guy again? Was it Barnabas or something? And then Barnabas started training him and just like that. So your lifestyle, it could be nice, just being nice. Like the person is getting insultive on the phone or the person is getting mad at you and you're like, oh, I'm really sorry. I, I didn't mean to do this here. I didn't mean to upset you and stuff like that. That will be like, the customer will be like, I'm being mean to this person. Why is the person nice to me? It's your lifestyle. You don't need to speak like the word of God. You, like you know, um, I was um, speaking with a customer. Uh, this guy at the end of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the talk told me, please, I'm a, I am a Christian. Uh, have you accepted Jesus in your life? I say, yes. <laughs> you see, because <laughs> I think it's not, it's not normal, okay, to, to speak about like, but if the customer yeah, the job. asks, if the customer asks you have to answer, yeah. Yes. You said, no, the world is going to be, to finish very soon. So you need to have Jesus to be saved. Wow. And you say, I say, that yes, I cool. So I am saying, but are you in Egypt? Yes, I'm in Egypt. Are you a Muslim? No, I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Christian. No, so <laughs> I, could, I say, okay, oh, sorry. Nice. Yes, yeah, some yes, people, but, when uh, customers ask you, you can, you can go ahead and, and talk. It's okay. Yeah, but you can, on your you job, speak. it's not allowed to, to do your religion yeah. and everything. But if a customer asks, you're supposed to respond to the customer. So that's right. And like I said, yes. sometimes it's just like and mom and if is saying, don't bother so much about having to really, really preach like preach. Like I gave an example that I was just saying a while ago and saying that somebody is very hungry. You have money in your pocket. You go to preach to the person. Buy the person food, let the person eat. 
then the person will be drawn to even listen to what you have to say. You go there and you're saying that the Lord bless you, the Lord will provide, the Lord will give you food. When God has already sent you with the money in your pockets to provide <laughs> for the person and give the person food, you're talking about the Lord will provide. Which of the Lords now? Share the one you're serving or the one the person is serving. Which one? Let, let people see the action. Some people, you will not preach to them. You will just act. And they will be drawn and then they will desire as they are desiring to know why this person is this nice, why this person is this calm, why this person is this peaceful, even though things are going the way they are going in the world. Then the Holy Spirit now will use that desire that they're having to transform, to bring a transformation or to get them to have an encounter or something. Because when people see your life like that, I'm sure there are Arabic people who are Christians as well. So those ones will be preaching. When they see your life and then they hear a message, the message can actually now hit home. So that's your part of the evangelism. I just mentioned the scripture here and I said that um, Paul planted Apollo waters and God gave the increase. Your lifestyle yes. is like the planting. Some other person preaches in Arabic. It's like the watering. And then God gives the increase. It's different ways different kinds of ways the person's preaching might be the water by might be the planting your lifestyle the preaching and preaching and then the person is saying ah they're just talking and talking and talking then the person turns around and sees someone who is leaving what they are preaching it will make them to accept like that so just like my money friend is saying truly Sometimes, so for most of us who are in these countries where you don't understand the language, you can't really speak the language, it's a barrier, you just go ahead and do this thing. Even when God told me to start preaching on, like doing this a chapter a day on Facebook, <laughs> the excuses I gave God, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm supposed to be speaking in English, I gave God all kinds of excuses. I was like, God, how can you, like, preaching the word of God, I, no, 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 I can't. And this was me who had been complaining that I don't know, like I can't evangelize, I can't talk to people, but this is now a wider audience because there are people all over the world who can get to watch this. And now I'm freaking out. Like God, you've been complaining that you're not preaching. You don't have an opportunity to preach because the people here cannot understand English. So now God is giving an opportunity for you to preach to people who understand English. And you're still giving an excuse. Come on, girl, what is going on? All right. <laughs> Because I, I am, I am, I am writing a book. Okay, okay? that's nice. And um, but uh, um, because this job, this job, uh, it's worrying me a lot. And uh, um, I am tired. And um, I think a lot of things. But the most important is the fact that I am writing a book. But the, this book right now is in French. Okay. okay. And uh, I need someone that can share my vision, that can understand my vision, okay, mm -hmm. to work on the English side. Uh, the English side. But okay. um, it's quite different because the book is, if I give you a, like an idea, an insight, um, God, okay, because I used to, I, I like reading the Bible. Okay? Oh, yeah. And um, one day, you know, this idea to write the book came in my mind. How? One day I was, I was in a, I, I am still in this group, but I don't, I'm not involved like before. In this group, people um, you know, share what they know about the word of God. And one day I share something. Do you think that there is any link between the death, uh, the deep sleep, the deep sleep of Adam and the death and the resurrection of Jesus? And some people was talking in the house, some rubbish. <laughs> and a lady came and answered and gave the answer I was expecting. And once she yeah. answered like that, all those people around started, I didn't know, and they started making comments, <laughs> positive comments. And the lady said, oh, Serge, I thank you because if you didn't ask the question, I have never imagined that it was like that check. that was it so and it's the second time i sh i put one one question no one okay they they couldn't answer and they was expecting the answer from me and it's like god was telling me you are like 
it's like I, I am wasting okay, time and knowledge. So uh, it's better to write in a book and people will, oh, yeah. will try those want to know. So that's, I'm working on it, okay? And please, um, please it's in French. Any way that we have to spread the gospel, we have to spread the gospel. We have to so spread my, the So my challenge is my English, okay? How to, what do you think about my English? You, you, you know, <laughs> we used to speak that. Like, I don't know what you're complaining about your English for. You're speaking English. Well, I've been speaking in English right now. Like, is that not English you're speaking? <laughs> you could always write oh. the book and, and do the stuff and i edit i don't i don't know french like you know like i don't know french like that yeah i, yeah, yeah. I speak french i understand french but i don't know french like that so maybe the translations if you it's translations you want i might not be able to get it right or maybe you can write an idea yes because i want to write I, I, I read more i try to read the bible in english for a while Mm -hmm. But um, um, you didn't I notice that you would, when you read yes, it. For, for instance, for instance, when you see Jesus said in French in the Bible, if your faith is like a mustard seed, seed, that's right, you speak to this mountain and go to the and say, be that removed. Oh, in French, the in French is like a different from the English side. For the English side, it's like they say that you can pull the tree, the tree, the mulberry tree, that's right, and you will throw in the in the sea. So in, in French, what does it say? In French, what does it say? They say that they speak, in French they speak about the mountain. You say to the mountain, um be that removed. Okay. Be that removed and go to the sea. But oh, in yeah, English yeah. it's like in English, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. They're, they're, it's like there are two different scriptures. Those are two different scriptures. There is the one that okay. it talks about the mustard seed. If your faith is as the mustard seed, you say... They speak about the mul mulberry tree. The mustard. Mustard. No. Mustard. I said you speak to the mul... You uh, pull out a mulberry, mulberry tree, and you... I don't know the about seed. the mulberry tree. I know about the mustard seed. And you say to them, but mustard seed, mustard seed is mountain. If your faith is like a mustard seed, mm -hmm. you will speak to the mountain. But they say you will speak to the mulberry tree. Is it, or you will pull out the mustard no. seed, no mulberry, mulberry, mulberry tree, tree, and nowhere. It's mountain. No. He has mountain and he has mustard seed. You can say if your faith is small. The thing is, sometimes what we might focus on might not really be the thing what they were just trying to tell you there is that no matter how small your faith is you can do great things with that faith if you really really believe that is the whole idea behind that message so it's just like we where i live right now we don't have mustard seed we don't have mountains we don't have those things in my place how do I now exercise faith? It's just that whatever, in whatever situation I am, if I have just a little faith and I hold on to it, I can do great things. That's the idea now behind that message. Oh, so it's not really like oh, the, 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 the pictures of the thing. Like even um, somewhere in Matthew, where they were talking about the last days, they say that he who is on the tree should not come down. If it's snowing, the snow will do something, something. There's some countries that don't have snow. So it is what <laughs> it's what is a reality in your country that will happen in your country at that time. But now they're just trying to tell us some of these things. The whole world was hit with COVID. It's a pandemic, right? So we know that these are the signs of the end. Because before COVID even happened, there was there's been war in my country for like the past, is it six years? Since 2016. We're in 2000 and what right now? Since 2016, there's been war in my country. So there was this time that it hit so hard. They actually burned a hospital. They actually killed some small, small children. I was like, this thing has gone crazy. Before when they were just doing all their craziness and killing people and all that, it was, I was not so taken aback. But when they started killing children, burning, 
burning hospitals i knew it was serious so i went to god and i was really praying so hard and i'm like god fix this thing god do something about it and then he told me that he's not going to get any better when the last days these are the signs it's going to get worse i was like huh you know how when you go to god and you're praying you're expecting like some good message some message to yes. pamper you you'll be like oh i'm going to stop this thing in the shortest time possible you know that kind of prayer and then he tells me it's going to get worse and i'm like god what are you saying and then there was this thing that happened in australia there was this thing that happened where the forest got burnt there was this other place that i don't know a lot of things a lot of things started happening and then boom he kept saying it's not getting any better so i started telling people now and then at some point i was feeling like i was a carrier of bad tidings so i started getting scared to tell people that this thing is not going to get any better and i was just keeping it to myself but i i, I could not keep it to myself for long so sometimes i was still safe and then i remembered when a group where we have this uh youth leader and he has put all of us there to to be in that group and then now he came his message that he got for the crossover was the same message that i got so i went to him now i'm like i got this message before but i was thinking like maybe i'm a carrier of bad tidings and everything he said his own that god gave him some things that were going to happen in 20 i think it was 2022 or 2021 that were terrible lots of people were going to die lots of things were going to happen it happened like that in sequence I, then boom like COVID hit sometime and i was like oh my god he said it's not going to get any better i prayed again he said it's not going to get any better these are the signs of the end and we should prepare he's going to come soon so what christians should be doing is not joining the crowd and saying ah things are bad or things are worse so they're just going to do is to be preparing because he's coming soon so that was where i ended and i and i kept telling people the people who care to listen fine people who don't want to listen it's okay but i've already said my part i've done my part my part was to say that this is what is coming this is the signs of the end and that's what i said kingdoms against kingdoms parents against parents you're hearing things that people are doing some people are gunning down their parents some people are cutting people with cut glasses like it's in the bible though. like these kinds of things will happen terrible times dangerous times when people are doing those things when you look at it you'll see that it's in the bible but people are like ah the bible is an old book an old book the bible is more current than any book that you ever yeah see. yeah 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 you know because even uh, the book i'm talking about i think the bible speaks about everything, everything. you know even this this everything this, this word and um, slavery oh yeah slavery is yeah. It's in the Bible, in the past, oh, yeah. in the present, in the future. Oh, yeah. So I am, I am writing about this slavery issue. It is and, it um, very serious. It's, Bible speaks about everything. Every single thing. You everything. have to believe it. Yeah. And the thing, the thing why people don't get it is because some people want to get it with their head knowledge. The Bible says that um, the Spirit of God will teach you all truths. So when you read some things in the Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you the truth behind that scripture. It, it ministers differently. It gets to you differently when the Holy Spirit teaches you, as opposed to when yeah. you just read it like a storybook. You know, I have to just read my Bible because if I don't read, let me just fulfill all righteousness. That's how some people say. I don't want, maybe Mrs. Sedge, <laughs> a friend of mine and he will always ask me from time to time did you do your quiet time so i want to be able to tell me she says that i did my quiet time that's why i read the bible not really because i read the bible that i wanted god to speak to me those are two different scenarios i just get up and read the bible because i don't want somebody who is a christian or a christian friend of mine to just ask me that day that princess did you do quiet time and i didn't do quiet time no i want to do quiet no. time because i want to hear from god yeah but when now when you read the bible it has weight See, i could remember my quiet time today why because it has had a whole lot of things that are connected to what happened to me what is going on even the scripture we're reading today but if i just read it like the normal days that i just read it anyways let me just read i, I have to do quiet time lord i don't want to miss my quiet time so i just pick my bible and, pop, 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 and hurry over Whoa. it it's going to be different as opposed to when I read the Bible and say, that, that is the Bible. 
that may save my, my life in this country because oh, I was yeah. so so down. The word of okay? God emotionally, powerful. morally, and so but uh, because God I, I used to rely, okay, because of my life, okay, it was even in Accra. Oh yeah. You know, one day it was very different in Accra. Day, I, very, very different. Yes. Yes, one day I finished, I was giving some French tuition to a, a little girl. And uh, the mother just paid me. And they, they, she, this, the, the place, their house was at Abofu. You know, Abofu, you know, is like uh, when you, you are on the George Bush motorway. Okay. okay? Uh, it's like it's in the, in the middle of the road. Okay. At the right side, you have um, this, um, when we, we used to, this place, um, and at the left side, you have Akramal. At the right side, you have Neighbor Junction. Okay. Yeah. So that day, I was, I was on this, on the roadside. And it's like, because I had the money, she just paid me. So it's like my mind, my, 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 my mind wants to go to Akramal just to buy something there. Yeah. Can I think? <laughs> and my heart feels like going to Neighbor Junction. I say, oh, what I'm going to do to Neighbor Junction? This uh, tomatoes. Uh, <laughs> onions and garlics. I don't want to buy all those things. And going to a grandma's, you know, you know, buying the biscuits or the so homemade. So it's like I am like two, three minutes, five minutes. I'm on the road, hesitating, left, right, left, right, and finally I listened to my wrist, to my mind. I went to a grandma, and I, I used to pray with a man of God. So I went to pray somewhere in Achimota Forest. And he was preaching, he said, you. I say, I was looking at the back. He said, yes, you, you. I'm speaking to you. God is telling me that he's speaking to you, but you don't pay attention. Oh, my God. I say, oh. So that day was God was speaking to me and didn't pay attention. Uh -huh. So I went to teach, to teach the girl again. And after the, the teaching, I came to the, I say, to the road. I said, God, please. If you Directly. still wanted to show me something at a neighbor junction, let me see that thing. <laughs> I pick it through, through, I went, when I fall down, I was, I said, no, no, the onions, no, the tomatoes. And I saw a man selling books. I remember that one month or two months before, I feel like I'm coming, cross, coming close to God to a book, okay, to learn. I wanted to buy this book um, uh, from um, this guy. Um, I forget, I remember. Um, so this guy, that motivation, not the black man, the white man from South Africa. Or, uh, How about America. you realize? No, um, John Maxwell. Either John oh. Maxwell books John Maxwell. or oh. something like that. But it didn't help me. So I saw a book that was the book that helped me a lot up to now. So when I saw the book, I didn't know. I saw uh, 12 secrets that will transform your life. And uh, I, I bought the book. I read it because I read the book in the, the first page and the last page. I said, oh, this is the book that I was looking for. <laughs> I bought the book straight. I went to my house. I said, OK, when I start reading the book, the first and the second chapters, chapters I said, it's OK. Now I understand. So I went to pick my Bible. And um, because I, I knew that in the Bible, they, they, they have some secrets. Oh, yeah. When I was in my father's house, along three years along, I used to read the Bible from the mo Monday to Saturday, from Genesis to Revelation. I didn't understand anything. But I knew that there was something in the Bible too. Oh, yeah. And when I bought this book, now I saw that there are so many secrets in the Bible. In the Bible. So I used to write things on my copy book. And when I came here, I, I bought a, a laptop uh -huh. and I started putting all those teachings in the laptop. The last, last week, I think two weeks ago, the screen of my laptop, my laptop broke. Oh my to God. Repair, it's, yes, to repair, it's like the press of the laptop. So I need to buy a new laptop. So I went back to, I said, oh God, okay. I don't want to write now because the guy was like, um, he wants to sell me a secondhand laptop. I said, not buy a new one, I will, I will start the job again. But I have solved, I have recorded everything somewhere. So it's, um, if I got a new laptop, I will continue the job. But it's, 
the Bible is so, so, so rich. It's so and, rich. Um, it's so rich. It has yeah. every single thing. When you study Everything. the Bible and you have a desire and you open up your heart to God, that God should speak to you. He's going to speak to you. He knows those who it, really have a heart amen. to want to know him, to want to learn him. Like when we're starting today, I sang, um, I want to know you more you know like that something like i want more of you because I when you so... know god for real when you love god for real he does amazing things in your life i'm telling you you yes. start seeing the word of god in another light there are scriptures that i'd read before i was doing i did religious studies in the high school so i studied religion i studied the bible like to pass exams but it was not it was not real it was not like it is now it's like the word of God has life. It, it is life, actually. You, know, you cannot, yes, that, that's so powerful because I, I'm praying to God to say that. I feel like even stop this job because I say this job I is know. too. <laughs> Sometimes. Yes, I'm, I'm the, yes I'm the, I, I, I feel like going back to my country because I know God is not calling me to maybe to settle here. Yeah. I need to be here. In all of us, place. we all know that too. We know that God yes, is that not this book, in these places where we are. I, it's a transition. Yes, because I need, I know if I meet someone that can pray with me and read the Bible every day, I will burn, yeah. the, I will burn this earth. Because <laughs> there are so many, even, yes, I'm telling the truth. Look at, um, I hear a man of God saying some, giving some prophecy. And, uh, I understood that when you read the Bible, I mean, I mean, if you don't have a clear, that's why I like this man of God that I bought the book. I mean, you don't have this clear, because he said that he's not a prophet, but he steady prophesies, prophecies in the Bible. And yeah. me, I was reading the Bible. Look at, I will give you something that maybe you, you will think, you, one day you will remember. Almost all the country in Africa, Francophone, like even Anglophone country, their self autonomy, they got it in 1916. Cote d'Ivoire in 1916, Cameroon 1960, even Nigeria 1960. And uh, if you try to, you know, when Israel was like deported to Babylon, okay, some people were like uh, rushing. And some people was giving some false prophecies that they are going to leave Babylon very soon to go back to Israel. And Jeremiah told them, please stay there, mm -hmm. build your houses, take care of your families there, invest in this land, pray for the peace of, the, of this land. But after 70 years, God will bring back you to Israel. Mm -hmm. And it's when um, the 70 years was about to happen that Daniel started praying and remembered to God and God let them go, come going back to you. Know, oh, yeah. So sometimes the year 70 is not, it's not a simple word like that. Mm -hmm. So I believe that most of the, maybe in the world, because I, I used to listen to this guy in America. It, he said, uh, I know, Sith, Sith Roland, he said, oh, I don't know. Sith Rod. Yes, Sith Rod. He used to speak about your, and it's he invited a supernatural, supernatural, yes. Yes, yes, I yes, you know. Too. I watch him too. He invited a black, um, a Nigerian that was living in Africa, in, in England, and this guy said that God taught him in like, uh, there is a reset of the world. And I believe 2030, okay, you know, even this, Ukraine crisis, war is not something that maybe we think that is, but it might be the beginning of the great change of a great change in the world. Mm -hmm. So even Africa countries with, okay, you know your country, uh, there are so many things politically, but it might be, there's a reset, something might change. In oh, yeah. every, there is a new, we, maybe we will see, but we need to pray. We need to pray, we need, but I don't have to focus on this, there are so many things that I've learned, and, okay, on reading the Bible, so many things, but I don't want to speak about Bible. all of them. They are all in the Bible. They are 
all in the Bible. It's just that we don't want to take time to study the Word of God. And even when I was about to start this thing, the, the 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 reason the Holy Spirit said we needed to do this is because a lot of people have access to the internet and they're preaching whatever they want to preach and people are believing it and it's wrong so he was like instead of coming and taking like two three hours on the internet and saying what this man said is wrong what that man said is wrong just preach what is right the people yes. have a mind to be able to discern See, if I am sick, I know that I'm supposed to go to the hospital. I will not go to the, I don't know, to the library. If I'm sick, I know I'm supposed to go to the hospital. So if somebody is presenting me the library, the library, the library, when some other person comes and presents me the hospital, nobody will need to persuade me to go to the hospital as opposed to the library. Yes, even the book that I am writing, I was speaking about something like that. Yeah. I say, okay, um, it's like uh, the Bible is not only a hospital, mm -hmm. or it's not only a university. Oh, yeah. It's a country, a country with different institutions. Oh, yeah. It's like there is a kingdom, there is a kingdom, and every kingdom, like every country has different ministers. F ministry, educational ministry, economic mm -hmm. ministry. It's like so the bible are all those things so if you have some issue with your um, uh, economics you know where to go oh. you know if you have f issue you go to the ministry of, of healing you go to the ministry of oh, yeah. it's like that yeah. the, bible the bible speaks only... about all those things oh all god's you know, structure all god's structure is work it's like yeah, they were life on this take out time to study the word of god that's why it's so hard and now because we're not studying the word of god for ourselves so when we go online anything that anybody is saying you believe and worst of all some people have lots and lots of following so you just see someone has a million followers because they have a million followers you think they're an authority it's not true when jesus yes, but... the pharisees were already there people were already following the pharisees and the sadducees but when he came and started preaching the truth which the people needed they knew what they wanted so they naturally started following him and the pharisees and the sadducees yeah. were mad they were mad about so I, I want to encourage you yes because i said you are very strong you know sometimes you can start something that's and people might discourage you but that's oh, the yeah. will of god i felt discouraged and jesus that only really started hard. with three disciples 12 70 and there oh, was yeah. one 120 Multitude. and today we know what is the church and the okay world. so yeah. you can start somewhere okay because uh, i think about it as well that's why i say okay why are you not writing first I know. Uh, should I come on like online and speak about the word of God? I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like doing those kind of things. But I, I believe I need to write everything that God showed me in my God put in my heart oh, okay, yeah. about the Bible. Because I'm like doing, I'm like, I don't I'm like doing a, a, a summary from Genesis to um Revelation. But I will not speak about um I, I only because I have already written all. Okay, mm -hmm. but I'm still learning. I I learned a lot of things about um, the gospels, the four gospels, yeah, and the difference between Matthew and and um, I learned about a lot of things about John. John is so deep. We should take advantage very... and, and spread the word in every single way. Any any opportunity we get, I, like now when I edit the, these videos, I put them on YouTube, I put them on TikTok, I put them everywhere. Nobody's gonna have an excuse as to why they didn't see the word of God or they didn't you are, see You are on God. TikTok? Yeah, I put it everywhere, okay. all over. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, because some people okay. give excuses, oh Lord. But the Queen of Sheba left her country and walked so far to come and see solomon to get wisdom and we have wisdom on the click of our fingers we're going to have no excuse on the last day no excuse <laughs> at all no it's true it is the truth yeah. so queen of sheba had to leave her country she's a queen she's a queen she left her country to come and meet solomon to learn wisdom and while here we have wisdom on the click of our fingers there are some people in china who could not read the bible they were killing people i mean yeah. i watched some documentaries and my i was freaking out literally but they're just documentaries of things that people experience today it's even calmer until that the, the, the people who have churches in china until people talk about the word of god in china it wasn't like that before 
they were literally killing people for serving God, for loving God, for talking God. And today we have it easy for us. Those people died, we have it easy for us. We're still complaining, we're still grumbling. We're, oh my God. Sometimes when I think about it, I'm like, Lord, please just have mercy. Just have mercy. Have yes, mercy the word of God. God. The Bible gives you the, the spirit that we, and the strength you need to do the word of God. Oh yeah. And uh, that's my concern. That's why sometimes I feel like leaving this country, going back to my country, find the right yeah. partners. Yeah. And try to work on my vision. God the vision that God took my heart. God is, is going to give it to you as you desire to get this group of yeah. people, this set of people. He's going to point them out. Like, yes, I need like that he, people. he specifically picked out his disciples and all that. He's, of course, going to show you how to pick those people that will be able to run with the vision, like, you know, and make it work. They call them destiny helpers, right? They'll just be positioned strategically to help you. See this guy here, like I was saying, we're talking about the guy today, the Egyptian guy who, he was just on the road. He was sick. He got sick. Why? Why? Why would he have gotten sick? It was for David's sake because David had to meet him. So he had to take David to where the people were. Oh yeah, that's why he got sick. He got sick not just because he had to get sick. Maybe he would have still been strong enough to follow his leaders. He got sick. His leaders abandoned him. David came and took care of him. And then with that, he felt like he owed David. And so he gave David information that David needed. That was a destiny helper. He did not look like yeah. a destiny helper. Like, what was he going to give David? Look at sick person who has not eaten for three days. What could he have given David? But he was the one who gave David the direction to wherever those people were. And David went and won, won the battle and everything. Maybe they would have mistakenly gone to a wrong road. And the more they were going away or far away from the people, the more the people might have dealt with their family members and all those things and taken advantage of the people. So they needed to close in on the people very early. And this was a destiny of us who was strategically positioned to help David. And if David did not also do his part to help the man, he would have probably missed it. And some of us, that's how we've missed our destiny helpers. We've missed a lot of opportunities because the people that come to us as destiny helpers, they're not wrapped in beautiful packages. <laughs> they didn't come like that big man who has millions or billions. They didn't come like that big woman who is working in one big office or something. They came like maybe the cleaner of your office. They came like maybe the truck yeah. pusher in the market. They came like maybe the bike rider who was just saying something and then it sounded like, you know, so you're just looking at down on those people because you like the housemaid in the yeah. house of the lepers. Yeah. Like the little girl who said to him and to, to, to Neyman and said, go, what the prophet has told you to do, go and do. <laughs> Who does that? I say, we even first of all give you the authority to speak as a maid until you're speaking to a high army, a high ranking somebody. So some of these things, we have to be very sensitive. We have to have a relationship with God. And then we study the word of God because when you study the word of God, we're seeing these things by the word of God, right? So when you study the word of God, you know that these things are real. And then you can be able to bring them to the practical realities of what you're experiencing now. And then you see that it's real. This is me who was saying here. There are people that when they're in trouble, they don't care about any other person apart from themselves. But God was expecting David here. This is David. People were planning to stone him. They were planning to kill him for a situation that all of them are going through. They're planning to stone him and kill him. As if he was the one who caused the thing. And then he was going with all of that stress and all the thing. He was holding on to the word of God that I said they were going to recover all and everything was going to happen. And that's how it worked. So he was going. He would have been so bothered about his problem that he would not even see this man to help the man. But he, he has always been a person who has the heart of gold and has the heart of God. So God cannot see somebody and pass. Every time Jesus was walking around, he was always drawn to the people who needed help. When the people are crying, the disciples say, I'll leave them out, leave them out. Jesus, they will, they will cry the more. Jesus will stop. That's David. He was doing the same thing. And that's how he got his destiny help us. Some of us who have missed our destiny help us many times. It's only mercy that is working out for us. <laughs> it's mercy that is hanging on a small place like <laughs> Seriously. Because we're looking at the people with the wrong mind. 
we're looking at them we're looking down on them because of pride because of where we think we are because of the level we think we are at god can use even an ass to speak to a prophet he can use anybody or anything to speak to you welcome mom tipa melvis thank you thank you thank you for coming and mom tipa melvis says god wraps gold in trash sensitively is very important sensitivity is very important and that's very true a lot of children of god these days were just so rowdy were just so noisy that we don't even hear when god is speaking to us we don't even hear what he's saying because we're just so crowded with the activities of the day with this and that social media is not helping it this one is popping here that one is popping there if you don't intentionally yeah. discipline yourself oh my god like you're in so much trouble if you don't intentionally yeah. discipline yourself you're in so much trouble so these people got to please and i think the last part we're almost at the last part where these people got in trouble they they finish um winning the battle and brought everything and brought the spoil and then some people say no we're not giving the people who stay back hmm god has not given you favor you don't want to support another person not not like the person didn't want to go to war these people were exhausted so taking them to war was like going it would have even dragged them back it would have even slowed them down So David gives an idea that no these people should stay back. You, you don't know what might happen in the land. So let them stay back and then we will go and fight and they will bring everything. Then you guys come back and say no because they did not go. So you guys should not give them. Ah, self-centeredness, selfishness. Thinking about it, the Bible says that do unto others what you want them to do to you. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? If you love your neighbor as yourself, would you have loved that you were the tired one and then you stayed back and then these people went and won and came back and said they will not give you anything how do you have felt they didn't think about it that way at, at that time they were only thinking of their selfishness i'm the one who went and fought the war so now it's only me who enjoy my things i'm not giving it to anybody david say lie you lie is it not you people that wanted to kill me now Now me I've gone and won battle and won won the whole battle and I'm coming by people are the ones who want to choose the style to share things. Are you joking right now? David said no. We are going to share to every single person. It doesn't matter. They stay back. What if they didn't stay back? Something else came and happened again in the land. So to an extent they were also doing work aside from the fact that they stayed back. They were also doing something which is safeguarding the land. For them to come back what if they wanted to come back and some people had occupied the land they would still have some, another fight to do so these people were there even though it's just like they were sitting because they were resting because they were tired they were safeguarding the land so somehow they were also doing some work but these other selfish people with their self-centeredness that they say no 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 we don't want the people here oh do, do, do. they're not going to get anything david just quieted them out sometimes there are some people in our lives that we just have to quiet them out when they're talking gibberish you just quiet them out me i don't stay there when it starts doing me in my body like you're draining me or you're straining me i just get out of i like i don't even stay there and the next time i have to talk to you will be a long long time Oh my friends know now now. So when we're having a conversation they're very careful as to what they're saying, the kind of conversation they want to bring, the kind of things they want to say. Cuz you just start it and it's training me. I just sign out though. And the next time I'll talk to you will be a very long time. So it's up to you. We have to be intentional about what we listen to, who we listen to, the things we watch, the things we hear and all those things. Me I don't listen to news though. Mm. -mm. <laughs> I'm not things that would get me to be freaking out or to be getting scared and then I'm living in fear instead of living in faith. Yeah, because some of this news they can so freak you out. I remember when um the pandemic was very serious. Oh, today 15 people died. Today my colleagues would talk and talk about it and I'll be like, "Oh, thank you. I don't want to hear. No, I don't want to hear. Did you hear today 2000 people died?" Like every single day you're hearing this number of people died, this number of people. you think fear won't enter into your heart. It would. when you keep hearing something continuously 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 hmm. is it not eve eve was a perfect example she didn't just listen to the devil one off and then she ate the fruit no 
she says she was listening and then at some point she began to see that the fruit was good it was a continuous process she was then listening to the devil over and over and over you start listening to the wrong message over and over and over soon enough you believe that message and you start doing nonsense so it's better for you when you see that the message is not the message of the lord it contradicts the bible my sister my brother run carry your two legs and run sign up there are some people that don't listen to on social media again you know, i used to follow them i unfollowed i used to listen to their messages i don't listen no more when you start saying some things that just contradict the bible one two times it has ended it's not by force let me listen to the ones that are saying what is connected to the bible let me come and be reading my bible self myself quietly i don't want stress hey Okay. So preach and preach and preach and has been preaching the word of God nicely and then wake up one day and say that polygamy is okay. It's not a sin. <laughs> like, huh? Say that again. I'm like, did the second wife just fall for heaven? You didn't woo her. You didn't go and ask her out. And as at the time that you're asking her out and woo her, is that not adultery? She is not the Bible that says that all adulterers have their place in fire. Like, what are you saying? I don't get. <laughs> I'm like, okay, oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. I've heard it's enough. Let me leave this one. So that's how I unfollow, I unfollow people. When you're saying some things that I don't tie with the word of God, I just unfollow you. When you're saying, I just stop it. I don't want stress. So I'm looking for people that believe in what I believe in, stand for what I stand for. And we communicate, yeah. we keep going along. That, um, this lady said something she's not even a christian she wasn't even saying it on the christian perspective she was saying it on personal development perspective and she said something that changed my life i do it from time to time not like all the time but i do it from time to time and it really helps me she said this she said look for five people in your life that are always a plus intentionally look for five people in your life that are always a plus write their names down look for five people that always drain you write their names down so for example, if the people that are always a plus in your life, you spend one hour with them at their time. So say one hour, 30 minutes. And then if the people that are always a minus in your life are, you spend like say 30 minutes, go to 15 minutes. Just be slowing it down, fizzle it out while you're adding it to the people that are plus in your life and come and tell her the difference after maybe a couple of months. It works like, uh, people of the world say magic. It works like magic. There's no way you're going to spend more time with people who are a plus in your life and your life doesn't get better. Yes. As opposed to spending less time with people that are a minus in your life. There is, it's just not possible on no level. So I do that though. From time to time, I pick out like four or five people that are adding to my life and I focus on them. I call them from time to time. We chat and we talk about things, you know, um, what do you think about this idea? What do you think about this? People that will push you to be your best. Not people that you go to them. This one, what are you even thinking? Which kind of impossible thing is that? <laughs> God has given me a vision. The next thing somebody is telling is that it's just impossible. Don't even think about it. And those are the people you want to be around. You will never fulfill purpose in your life now. You just never fulfill purpose in your life. So I intentionally do that from time to time. Maybe after a couple of months or after a couple of, you know, I just choose, pick out people. Okay, from what I've been, from my conversation with this person so far, this is what I've gained. So this one, or oh, this one has been draining me. Okay, pop, 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 your time reduces. You, your time adds. Just like that. I do it with consciousness. And it has been helping okay. me. Okay. It has been helping me. So thank you so, so much for coming on today. I'm really, really grateful. Please, whenever you have time again, don't hesitate to come live and be a blessing to the people and talk to us. If you even have to talk in French, I don't mind. There might be French people in my audience that I can't speak in French. So 
No, no, you know, the, you, I was, uh, it was a pleasure to speak, to speak English, but... Um, oh, yeah, I'm really grateful. No, like, if, you, if you're led, if you're led to speak in French, go ahead and speak in French. And the French people in my audience will also be blessed because maybe they don't understand English as much as I do and as much as you do. So if you speak in French, it would really be a blessing to them. So anytime you are available, we'll be glad to have yes, you. Yes, most of the time, most of the time. I, it's on Thursday and Friday is that I, I have. Uh, oh please! I've but sometimes I see you in I see you um, in live, but I am working. You know. Oh yeah, That's I my, understand. I understand. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am working from from home. You know, today I don't have any job, so I oh, see yeah. why not taking advantage to, oh, to thank speak. Oh, thank you so much. Because I also, as I told you, you know, living here is not so easy for me so i knew that you could say something about my situation as i'm living oh, yeah. in egypt in egypt and uh, i know that uh, i didn't make any mistake because you are living in the foreign land and you are almost oh, yeah. the same situation, <laughs> the same same situation. situation too. So, thank you so but much. Um, for so many things okay we we get in touch and speak about a lot of things. oh yeah we'll even get in, in, we'll definitely in private you can send me some message yeah. all right take care sister Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Oh, my. We're so grateful, Mr. Serge, today. We're so grateful. Mr. Serge Anderson is actually my friend. We actually met in Ghana, and then we separated. We all went to different countries again, and then he now ended up in Egypt, and I ended up in Thailand. It has been great. When I met him, he was a very nice person, very soft-spoken, very calm. And you all saw him here. You know, he's a very calm person. And, of course, I when I met him, I got to try to speak only French so that I should sharpen my French as much as possible. And he was always trying to speak English to sharpen his English as much as possible. And he's really doing great. Like, for all the time on the live stream, he has been speaking in English. That is good. It's a plus, like a big plus. So thank you all so, so very much for being here today. This one was a long one, people. And that's how God does it sometimes. He just brings somebody on here and the person brings up a scenario or something that they're going through. And then God gives us an idea around it, how to resolve it or how to get it better. And that's how it works. So we're flexible like that on a chapter a day. So don't get worked up when you come on here and we're not talking about the particular chapter we read. God is taking us to some other place so that so many people out there can get blessed. This scenario he just put out here today is what a lot of us are facing. Some of us are not in our country of origin where we were born. Some of us are in countries where the language barrier is really a big thing and we're feeling really down. We're feeling really worried like we're not preaching the gospel. We're not evangelizing. And Mom Annie Fred just put it out perfectly as God had also told me sometime before, be a living epistle read of men. It is your lifestyle that is going to preach to most of these people who do not understand your language. Don't worry so much. Stay connected to God. Do the best you can to fellowship, even if it's online. And also get to study the word of God for yourself and also get to pray for these people and then live the Christ life. And that will also help them to get to know Christ. It has been your favorite girl, Princess Kneetum. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live like today. We always, always, always desire that you should listen to the Bible. So we have the audio Bible on TikTok. We have it on YouTube. We have it on Facebook. And we're looking forward to getting it on Instagram. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for all the amazing things you've done for us. We thank you for our brother who came on here and brought us another area that we needed to deal with. Father, we thank you for the lessons that we've learned. We thank you for the answers that we had today. We pray, oh God, that many more answers are going to come up as people are going to watch the video in time, oh Lord. And we all are going to continuously learn in your presence. We're going to bask in your presence and learn all the wisdom that you have in store for us. 
Thank you, King of Glory, because we know you've heard an answer. We pray for those who are just starting their day. We pray that you bless them. Keep them safe and secure. For those who are halfway their day, we pray that you carry them out safely for the rest of the day. And for those of us who are about to sleep or who are already sleeping, we pray that you give us visions and dreams, just like you said, the young men shall dream dreams and the old men shall see visions. Lord, let that be a practical reality for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And also give your beloved sleep. Give us sound sleep so that by your grace, we'll wake up tomorrow again to carry on with the rest of the day's activities by your grace. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've heard and answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, people. Tomorrow is another day. We're reading the last chapter of the book of 1 Samuel, and we're going to go to the 10th book on Sunday. It has been God all the way. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. I know Mom Tipanovis was saying that too. <laughs> Love you, woman of God. God bless you. Night, night.